clear the chat window, Daniel. All right, we are live. Welcome to season two, session three of our Sea Dog Scripts campaign. Hello, Thank everybody. You, Today's GM. This session's audio will be made available as a podcast. See the description for details. And with that, uh, Nash, do you have any character business for Lieutenant Rogers? No, no, I do not. Com Junkie, do you have any character business for Randall? Well, huh? What we're playing right now? Yeah, no, nothing, no, nothing but monkey business. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ronky, do you have any character business for Captain Hayden? I do not. Mel, do you have any character business for Claude? Not at this time. Rigel Kent, do you have any character business for Dr. Spencer? I do, actually. Uh, I spent my seven points to pick up uh, what we right. were renamed as Magic Sense from the Psy Sense uh, Power in Sonic Powers. Uh, so uh, six, six points on the Magic Sense ability and one point in the Magic Sense skill, but it is uncontrollable and unconscious and it also causes me headaches but it lets me detect nearby magical activity maybe right right okay got it i vaguely remember all that although it was you know three weeks ago well i have added particulars on the advantage uh uh, like okay. a proper advantage so if you go how does this work again you should be able to just click on on my character and look good i might have to do that okay so uh i have to do that <laughs> gm business uh for the record i am going to be lumping or let me rephrase that i'm going to be treating area knowledge as if uh, the same as for on-the-job training slash uh, language training when you are immersed in the, the language and culture. That is, uh, you're going to be earning two points a day in area knowledge, or two hours a day in area knowledge uh, for the purposes of increasing your area knowledge of the Caribbean or whatever. Um, you could put that separately on the... Uh, spreadsheet if you like but uh you can pretty much assume it um i am not going to make that retroactive just for ease of use because otherwise everybody would get a point in it i think it's been over 50 days um maybe i may yeah. need to consider some of the parameters of that which area knowledge is it? That being one of the parameters. <laughs> All right, so stability. Uh, so as it happens, uh, I had some misunderstandings about it. Uh, I blame the writing and editing on that article, which was uh, uncharacteristically bad, apparently. It could have been your comprehension level that was uncharacteristically bad. No, it was. There was at least one spot in there where they repeated. Uncharacteristically the, bad, or just characteristically bad? It's uncharacteristically because they're usually better than that. But uh, in this particular case, Not they like had a mongish. sentence repeated right after itself. But uh, the arrangement of everything was a little unhelpful. As it as a result, I. Uh, was doing some of the long-term and short-term uh, stability a little wrong. So I'm making some adjustments. Yay. You will uh, see the benefit and or uh, detriment of all that uh, in the near future. Um, so just so you are aware, what's going to happen is you guys are going to be gaining a long-term sanity point per day at sea. And you are going to make a will roll to 
buffer that. And the oh, so the the deal the deal with the long term versus short term was the short term sanity damage, quote unquote, uh, can be recovered with ten minutes of downtime, effectively, as we had already discussed. However, the long term points uh, take a full day of not doing anything. The reason why that's going to matter is because as you are getting more and more space madness being at sea for long periods of time, um, you're going to need to take longer, uh, longer uh, shore leaves to get rid of those. Ah, right. Mongoose has a something like that. It's in the... What was it introduced? It was in that uh, Deep Space Expedition thing to travel. Right. Yeah, so anyway, uh, hopefully the sanity will come up a little more often now. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, next point, talent. So uh, the reaction benefits for talents, I discussed this a little bit on the uh, on Discord. Uh, between sessions, but the bonus you get for reactions from having a talent uh, applies only after demonstrating that talent, which is normally by using the affected skills in that talent. Uh, so, in the case of the interrogation and Hayden was wanting to have his uh, have his born born war leader born war leader apply, and what he needed to do was use one of the skills it covered in order for that to be evident. Okay. Which, in that case, would have made sense to be savoir faire military because that is one of them. Now, I made some, I made a couple of notes here, or well, one other note that in, in Roger's case, uh, his talent was Mariner, and it did not have, it does not cover any skills that would have helped in that case. So that wouldn't have been any better, but uh, Hayden's case, it would have. Now, the other part of that is uh, double dipping. So in this case, you're already getting a bonus on Savoir Faire of plus four. You're not going to also get a bonus uh, after the fact on the reaction. But if you use Savoir Faire first, and then later you might get a bonus on that, or if somebody else was there, you could see it. So that something to think about. Uh, you, if you want to get that bonus, on a on an influence uh, test, then you need to find a way to demonstrate one of your abilities uh, so you can actually qualify for it. So fair enough. Now, next bit is related. Uh, in the case of Hayden and Payne, uh, Savoir Faire can be used to press your status. So both of you guys had said that you wanted to leverage your status in that uh, in that instance to uh, to to impress upon the other guy that he should uh, he should do what you tell them and savoir faire is the way to do that. So in Hayden's case it would have been savoir faire military. In uh, Payne's case, it would have been Savoir Faire uh, High Society. I rolled the skill to stick my nose up higher. Exactly. You got to do it just right so you don't show off anything that you're not meaning to. Untrimmed nose hairs. Exactly. Now, as a reminder, uh, lying does not require a skill roll. We always tend to forget that. You don't have to roll a skill to lie. You only have to roll a skill to influence someone. 
if that happens to be a lie, that might involve something like detect lies or something like that. Now, one of the things that we keep running into is when you're trying to tell the truth and you want them to think that you're telling the truth, how do you do that? And we've had a tendency to use diplomacy for that. But uh, just on a quick reading, I think will is actually the right thing to use there, just raw will, because that is what you resist detect lies with. Most of the time. So if you're lying without a skill, um, you should be rolling will versus their detect lies. Generally, yeah, that's true. If they are attempting to detect lies against you, you would resist with your will. So, yeah. One other point regarding influence is uh, I'm considering using the uh, rule of 15 on influence. That was one of the suggestions I saw somewhere. I don't even remember where now. Uh, that would mean that any roll of 15 15 plus is a fail on influence regardless of your stuff, which prevents uh, ridiculous bonuses from railroading everything. Does anybody have a problem with that? Is it the rule of 15 or rule of 16? Uh, 15 in this case, although I could change that. Well, it kind of changes up how my character is built. Yeah. It, not necessarily. I mean, you're still going to get all those bonuses, and those will offset penalties, but if you roll 15 plus on the dice, uh, that's still a kind of ridiculous roll anyway. Um, but like I said, I could change that, or you could say, eh, I don't like that. I don't have an opinion at this time. I'm leaning I'm not, but... I'm, I'm willing to see where it goes and how often I fail. <laughs> it's I, mean, I don't I'm, have an opinion uh, at this time. <laughs> I, I would be in the no camp on that one. Isn't it resisted though? Yes, influence rolls are resisted. So wouldn't it pay to well, how would you work that out if they are influenced and you're rolling? So you've got a bonuses 17 or whatever, but you roll a, a 16. How are you going to affect that on the resistance? I presume you just treat it as a fail by zero or fail by one, whatever. Are the resistances going to be capped? Resistances. Well, the, oppo mean? the opposing roll. You know, contest uh, of will. Yeah. So if you have a will of 16 to resist someone's influence. Mm, right. Okay. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Mm. That would need to go both ways, I would think. Yeah. That's a, that is a good point. I will review this later. I mean, it's not like I'm going to try and leverage my ability to talk someone into jumping off a cliff necessarily with they don't really want to. Well, uh, one of the reasons why I thought about that was because uh, uh, Hayden ended up with a lot of bonuses against the uh, uh, against the, the captain of the hazard. And, uh, and there was really no way he was going to resist that. There so is, it made me pause. I seem to recall um, something in the reaction chapters that say, you know, you can you you can have a predetermined reaction. Um, it doesn't matter what role roles are made. Um, I guess the GM can ask for a role, but it it may you know make it just a little bit more favourable or worse depending on the outcome of the role but yeah. you can have pre predetermined reactions yeah well that's not always really useful but 
never mind that. I don't want to. I don't want to get off onto a tangent on the the influence thing. There, there is a big rabbit hole in that uh, in that area of the rules. So, does we'll avoid social that engineering now. cover anything like that? I'm pretty sure that's where I got that rule of fifteen. As a suggestion, not as a not as a change to the rules. Anyway, uh, one other thing regarding uh, social engineering specifically is uh, so what I'm going to do because we ran into the la- we ran into this last week where someone didn't well actually everybody didn't ask the questions that they really needed to ask uh, of their interrogator and instead of me just giving that to you uh what i'm going to start doing from now on providing i remember is to ask let you ask me if you've missed anything and if you ask me i will remind you of something and then if a question got missed it's my fault and not yours it's always your fault so try to remember that. Wouldn't that fall under common sense? If I sense? ask you, do you have any more questions, and you can't think of anything, you can ask me back. Have I missed anything? Missed anything obvious? Okay. Uh, next item. So when it comes to shore business, uh, whenever you guys go on liberty and stuff, one thing I wanted to remind you of is uh, listening for rumors. If you're not doing anything else, at the very least, you could be listening for rumors. So I wanted to put that bug in your ear. And sort of along the same line, there are a couple of bits that I picked up from some of my research specifically uh, when it comes to area knowledge and how that applies to uh, merchanting. Uh, They say that Generally, the best way to know what types of goods are in demand was to speak with other merchants about how their cargoes had sold on the coast, etc. And also, the merchants, wherever you are, uh, regularly correspond with other merchants in other markets. So by talking to these people and, and gathering that information, you can actually increase your own area knowledge in that regard. They'll also talk about guard Costa activity and that sort of thing. So, Jolly good. something to remember. Uh, one other item is I have not been able to determine that there's actually an appraise skill in GURPS anywhere, but it looks like the closest thing to it would be connoisseur. So if anybody wanted to be able to appraise, for example, an item of treasure, one might have connoisseur artifacts or something like that. Mark is like, got it. (laughs) Oh, I have a uh, character development thing that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And last bit on my list here is uh, to remind you that I have been updating the wiki with uh, information about the places you have been or are known to be going and that sort of thing. So uh, I don't expect you guys are actually going to be reading through my my wiki stuff, but I wanted to make sure that people knew that it was there because somebody might want to. I look at it from time to time. I did this whole big thing on Gardacostas, just mostly for my own purposes, so I could gather all that information in one place instead of having it scattered across my notes. And that, I believe, is going to be all my business stuff. In which case, we move on. If the button will push. Sea log, Tuesday, February 13th, 1725. Northwest Providence Channel, just after sundown. Cloudy with a fresh southeast breeze. 
Having been questioned and released by the captain of His Majesty's Sloop Hazard, the expedition has departed Harbor Island ere the sun sets and is underway toward La Habana. Now I gotta pull up all my stupid maps. Well, we'll start with that. Now, uh, I have a couple of in game business things to deal with. How long do you guys plan to stay in Havana? That's a really good question. The usual uh -oh. is uh, two days to uh, do the merchanting and the, the passengers and all that. Um, however, this is Havana, and there's a little bit more to do there. Plus, you've got a number of quests, I'll say, that, uh, that need to be done there. So you might be there a little longer. Also, uh, we may be dealing with more crazy so uh, you may need to bleed off some of that time. Therefore, I pose the question, uh, just so we can get an idea before you get there of how long you plan to stay. Anybody well, have any uh, recommendations? Well, I know our next point of call, port of call, isn't really a settlement or anything like that. So taking on. Uh, cargo or tradables is probably not necessary neither is grabbing people in this case that is not true oh i thought we were is there not a yeah. so after right. havana is uh campeche unless you guys uh find some reason not to go there and campeche uh, well, is not a small town oh okay so i thought okay i didn't realize that that was actually a settled area and uh, yes populated okay yeah well, then never disregard yeah, it's got a population of like 9,000, according to what I've got. Cool. Well, that works. So, back to the question. How long is it? I thought we were just... Okay. Uh, now, I know Payne is going to want to get in and out as fast as possible because, uh, because of the La Dame Blanche uh, being ahead of you guys. So, I'm sure he will weigh in on the negative side. So we'll do it this way. Does Rogers want to stay longer? Rogers has the most actual business there. Does he? What's his business there? Business there. And what is my business there? Well, well, if I you see. Will, uh, you will, uh, I see what my business could be. You will examine the quests. Uh, you will see that you have. All right. You have a quest. Three a there. Two there. Excuse me. I'm counting the ones you can't see. Shush. So sad. I have to. No, mine's like not until Antigua. Yes, I think I have some reason to stay in Havana for a number of days. Let's uh, let's ask the question this way: Do you want to stay extra? And extra being more than two days. Shoot for four. Just because. I'm certain uh, Sir Randall will uh, be able to find something to do in those extra days. Pace the decks, wondering why we're not on our the way. No. Uh, yeah. He'll walk to the other side of the island and break out the spyglass and try to see if he can see La Dame Blanche. Wondering why we're not on the road trying to catch up. <laughs> It'll be fine. You're, you know, this is also making the presumption that we're going to not, you know, sink on our way through the, the secret way or the shortcut. Oh, that didn't whisper very well. I was only just not wanting to clutter up the chat. Okay. Uh, well, while uh, while Nash is considering that, uh, does Hayden have any reason to to stay longer? No. Nope. Don't think so. Now, I will. Have, I would have been expecting Hayden to be uh, 
trying to go look for records uh, regarding his son uh, in this case, which he should find something here. But that doesn't necessarily mean he needs to take more than two days. Well, research can take a while. It can. Well, it'll be dependent on what he finds, if anything. Okay, but he's not making plan plans on wanting to stay longer. No, two days should be enough. Fair. I don't suppose Claude has any reason to hang out, hang around, does he? Uh, no. Okay. I have uh, that is. Havana is oh. a large one. Large city. All right. I think okay, I needed to fine. share something with uh, with uh, Phil. Okay. Um, yes, Havana is uh, quite large, actually. It's a uh, population of about 27,000. Um, so knowing that Randall wants to get in and out and, uh, does Spencer have any reason to hang hard. around? I, I do have a reason to stay, um, to investigate, research, see if there's any kind of land maps, land charts, et cetera, uh, or historical information in that region, uh, research on the that area sense. at hand or to be at hand. Yeah, you should be able to find cetera. something here. Okay, that's fair. Uh, well, so do you want to stay longer? Uh, longer, no, but it might kind of precipitate the necessity if I start chasing a It'll rabbit be, hole that, ooh, I found it'll a be more a, a amenable wealth of... to staying longer then. Yes. So it's really going to come down to Rogers, whether or not how long Rogers wants to call it. So what does the, the captain? Call? So what's, the call? what's the captain think about uh, a prolonged stay in uh, Havana? Well, um, he thinks two days is fine, but if people need to stay longer. But really, it's uh, this is Randall's expedition. That's true. He he Start calls right. the shots. I just drive the boat. And cough. So Hayden defers to the uh, owner slash expedition leader. Man, it's like I'm like watching a, a football game where everybody's punting back and forth. Uh -huh. Oh, hey, I got stuff. I found something <laughs> that I, you know. That's why I was going to suggest, you know, just, you know, Go for you know, say two extra days, and then you know, go from there. If we don't need the full two days, then that's good. Yeah, that can work. So Spencer recommends uh, doubling up, and uh, everybody's like, "Yeah, that sounds fine." Okay. Be yes. Good enough. Because I'm brilliant. Uh, Check second. in at day two, and then. Yeah, have everyone kind of powwow at the ship on day two or end of day two to see yeah, if we want to leave, and then. Okay, second question is: uh, given the uh, security situation in Havana, that being basically the uh, Caribbean capital of the Spanish Empire, um, the question is out there whether or not you want to attempt to enter the port in Havana or enter a port uh, close by. For example, there are two major rivers uh, flanking the town that uh, people also will anchor at. And apparently there are quite a few other rivers farther out. So to re-ask the question more specifically, do you want to attempt to enter Havana port directly. Why would we not? I he just might not want to. Do, I think that had to do with uh, our 
how much yeah, with the risk of our smuggling activities there's that there's the the overall security level of it you guys are familiar enough with the caribbean at this point to know that the uh, treasure fleet is a thing and it's probably there and that means security is going to be nuts well i don't think we're intending to get into any trouble here <laughs> Well, no one ever is. You arrogant. Right. That's not true. You're doing all. I know, right? Well, I, I, I did. I, 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 you know, maybe, you know, I can have hope that shenanigans will occur. <laughs> There's a treasure fleet there, then we should be meaning to get up to no good. I, right? <laughs> I mean, it does have the word treasure in it. <laughs> well, that's another matter. And then we hear Daniel go, hold on, let me crumble up all of my notes and toss them aside i'm gonna need a lot more soldiers uh okay so Add i'll more consider rub. consider you going to going into havana port unless you uh guys tell me otherwise before then at least now you're aware all right um so next bit here is the watch bill so this as you see it is how we split it up before damn it did that shit again How do you turn that? No, that's Unlock right. Unlock tokens. Damn it. And Take now I have out. to approve it. Okay, better. Now, uh, so the thing I wanted to bring up here is that when we made these arrangements before, uh, Claude was not a PC. And uh, we arranged this so that we'd have basically split the PCs up between the, the watches. So now that Claude is an actual PC, uh, we probably need to rearrange a little bit. So if you guys want to swap those around, but this will, uh, this will affect who's on watch with whom uh, for the future. Yeah, so right know. now we have one, two, three, four PCs on the larboard watch and one, two PCs on the starboard watch. Yeah, I could swap with somebody onto the starboard watch. Could or do that. Do that. Well. I yeah. don't know. She doesn't but she doesn't like the monkey. But and the that puts her on her. Or, or him. Uh, whatever. I think the only the only thing I would bring up is that uh, Furlong there is one of the more skilled sailors, um, but no, oh, you're really not going to get any improvement either way. So yeah, you're probably fine. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, you guys can fiddle with that, but uh, there it is. All right, next bit. Uh, Rogers specifically also. Uh, bold, are still healing from wounds suffered in Nassau. So, right, you guys have I need to already make made stuff. Hold that thought. So, uh, you guys have already made healing rolls for today, the 13th. Uh, and we've already dealt with that last time. So, from this point, you guys will be making daily rolls for healing, specifically Rogers. And uh, that is going to be at minus two if you're on light duty. And that will also be at minus two if you are at sea. So if you're doing nothing but rest, you get the minus two at sea. If you are working, it'll be minus four. And bearing in mind that normally, you don't even get a roll if uh, you're not on land sleeping it off. Now, that said, uh, if you are on light duty, then uh, there's going to be a penalty to the control roll because you guys are under undermanned. And if you guys are off duty, that is, both Rogers and Bold are not working at all, 
then uh, you guys will be extra shorthanded. That's Idris is bold, right? Yeah. Okay, so that means uh, Spencer probably should also be on the starboard watch, uh, just sort of keeping an eye on the, the two injured guys. Oh, well. You should drop I guess you could names on the, um, on the tokens. That's so, true. So when you mouse over them, you've got the name. That's probably fair. I will make a note. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Actually, I wonder if we can do uh, it. Unfortunately, that... I don't think you can. That inverses no. the thing before. Now there'd be four PCs on the starboard uh, watch instead of the larboard. Okay. Well... You can just consider that temporary if you're just wanting to uh, keep an eye on them. On the other hand, you're going to be watching them whether they're on duty or not. So, um, so the other part of that was that uh, Spencer was going to get his physician roles. And did we do that last time? I think we did. I don't know. I think I we did. played forever. I don't remember what this game is about. All these players ditching out on us and stuff. So today is the 13th and you guys are so the physician rolls are every three days, I think. So you'll get the next roll on the 17th and then the 20th and the 23rd. Uh, so remember that. Try to remember that. I'm going to forget. Uh, so, uh, given the uh, situation with the, the work and, and the shorthandedness, what is the doctor's recommendation going to be for those two patients? Uh... Bold is going to want to work. I'm betting Rogers is going to want to work. Well, uh, nothing else like duty. I'm wondering if we should swap Bold off uh so they're not on this well i don't know so they're not on the same uh same watch mm. up to you guys i suppose yeah i mean you know light duty is probably fine but it's just i'll have to keep an eye on them Make sure they don't do stupid stuff. Doctor recommends light duty for Rogers and Bold. Uh, Bold will follow the doctor's orders. I don't know about Rogers. Well, if he doesn't, I will curse him out in... Hold on, let me see what language I'm going to use. Uh, Portuguese. Reluctantly. Maybe Yiddish. Maybe Yiddish. Okay. Reluctantly, okay. But, but he'll agree. All right, you guys take it easy. Uh, it'll basically just be a minus one to the control roll for the two guys that are doing half duty, so uh, not too bad. Uh, last thing, uh, research clue triggers. Um, Payne had a chance to look at uh, the skull that Claude has... Uh, collected and it occurs to me i should have really brought up that image because it's relevant as we're talking about it there it is um so what i wanted to allow uh pain to do is make a roll on in the box on uh hidden lore treasure See if you can bounce. Actually, your... that doesn't have to be in the box. You're going to know if you don't know anything. Bounce the roll on uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's head in the box. Uh oh, did Mark disappear? I'm here. Your pain. And what am I rolling? <laughs> You're not really here, are you? Um, hidden lore. Like oh. Hidden lore. Oh, regarding the skulls. Come 
and in the box. Yes, in the box because I could lie to you. Liar. I rolled no. tech lies. Your skill is higher than I thought. How many points did you put in that? Uh, enough. Four. Really? Damn. Yep. Okay, well, you've heard of this thing. Uh, or actually, these things. Of thing of a doohickey. So, Claude had already said that uh, she was under the impression there were it was a pair. And uh, that is what you know. You know these uh, under the name of the gateposts. Gateposts? Are you at And uh, you will note as part of your identification that there is a a hole, an indentation in the bottom of the skull, as if it were to be inserted on top of something. Ooh. A stick. A stick. A post, even. Is that thing human-sized, or is it less than human size? No, it's it's smaller than that. I meant to say that. Yeah, it's like a two and a half inches across. It's it's not quite fist size. So that's a super pig meat. If this yeah, is anything not an like bed knobs skull. and broomsticks, where I put it on the on a on a knob and have to rub it. Oh wait, we're not rated for that kind of chatter, are we? <laughs> Raising. Okay, and that is all the pre-voyage stuff. So, getting Time on to the to after wreck. voyage. Time to wreck on the. the Time to get wrecked. Spe Speaking of wrecks, uh, we missed a ship breakdown check. Uh, I wouldn't say while we, we were it, at uh, <laughs> while we were at Nassau. So, uh, somebody needs to roll. Against the ship's health, minus three. And I should have brought up the uh, vehicle. It is now brought up. Minus and unfortunately, three? we can't roll off that thing. I can roll if nobody has any issues with it, because I have that set up. Oh, yeah. Yes! Should actually make them rollable. We've said that before. Because the GM said All right. so. That is not a critical failure, however, so there will be a failure. And... and it is Red's fault. Let's see. I need to bring up the uh, thing. Somehow I believe he'll say something about it because we have a, a lady well, on is... board. Now... Uh, what I want Nothing somebody to do, it. if I can, if yeah, you can, on. I don't, I don't recall if this works or not, but see if you can roll off that, off the, uh, random malfunction table into the box. Yeah, you should be able to do that. Oh, wait, maybe not. I'm thinking you can grab the, grab the button and drop it in there like normal. Did that work? That looks like that worked. Yes. Okay, that has the timing on it already. Good. Okay, so I need to make a note. It's going to happen here, and it's going to happen there. Hey, uh, Brian, it might be a good idea to open up the crew, uh, parentheses plus, of the Graceful Dame. Uh, image that has uh, all of the NPCs on it for the stream. Since the GM is, you know, hasn't gotten around to doing so. It would be easier if the GM shared that one. Yeah. I shall create a hotkey for that. Okay, so... Uh... I yeah, let's see, that's gonna happen there, there. So I need to do that. And at some point in this process, I'm gonna have to figure out what that breakdown actually is. Because unfortunately, I don't have a list of potential breakdowns 
on a sailing ship. Well, actually, well, I do, but it's not uh, it's not tableized. It seems kind of uh, relatively easy. You just figure out where it's at and you know, where where what where, where where's it at? You'll find out. Is it rigging? All the lines break, and uh, poor Henry falls down. No, it'll be Red who falls down because you know everything. Anything bad happens happens to Red. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had a different table. And I have not created that. Bad GM. Bad. So right. What's Red's was... real name? Oh, James. James Sherd. I think his red real name is Red now. In every campaign. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, having established that, uh, stability. At this point, I will have everybody make a will roll. Uh, plus born sailor or semen or whatever you might have in that regard. Those are talents. Those are talents. Nope. Um and I think yeah, just the uh, just the uh, will unmodified. Is that except for that ship or something else? Uh no. Uh will. Okay. So I think Rogers yes. has a uh, born semen or something like that. Crazy, so crazy. That yeah. Uh, I guess that would manifest in yeah, yeah. starting to speak in foreign languages foreign more language. often. So this is a stability role? This is resisting the uh, addition of new long-term stability points. No, uh, so apparently uh, Hayden is perfectly fine. No, with, uh, uh, with regards to the languages, Mark, no, uh, that's just a quirk he, he already has. Uh, he, like sometimes gets confused uh which language he should be using when he's talking to somebody so every now and then he Roger, might Roger. just change language in the middle of a sentence man claude is like screw this noise i have decided i hate boats let's see love nope, the new feature. i created a note for the skull if people want to Add stuff to it. Oh, did we not have one already? I don't I think we one. can. I think you're the only one that can uh, add. Well, I had the quests together. on there, but that's oh. different. Oh, I can. Okay, so I've been doing. Yeah. Oh, Roger's got a success uh, by three. The new feature where you can set up your roles to work off defaults is awesome. Hmm. All right, that Ignore is that. that. So uh, essentially, say however long the trip takes. Say the tr trip takes seven days, and you guys are going to gain one long-term uh, stability point per. Uh, those of you that succeeded will actually reduce that by that amount. So you'll take that many less, fewer. Whatever. Whatever. Uh Travel endeavors is what I'm going to call this, borrowing <laughs> from Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy a little bit. Um, specifically, in the case of anybody who's got some kind of long-term project that you're wanting to do while uh, you guys are under sale. Yep. Um, I don't need everybody to come up with something right now, but I know that Spencer has been and is working on uh, copying Davino's journal that he got from uh, the hunter. Yep, and he has both artist drawing and writing. So and uh, 
blank journal book and ink so he could theoretically uh, reproduce uh, everything that's in there, you know, hopefully. So along that line, um, there is the bit in basic 346 about long tasks. And that one is, uh, that's what's going to apply here. Um, you'll have to sort out how many hours a day that you think you're actually going to apply to that. And you could put that on the, uh, you could put that on the, the spreadsheet for the study and actually track the, uh, the number of hours you've accumulated that way. If you want to, that would make sense. Uh, but however you set that up, that's where that's going to be applied. Roger, Roger. Um, what I discovered uh, is in uh, Low Tech Companion 3, page 34, uh, they actually do say how long it takes to copy a book. So the base three, writing speed, what? 34. Uh, base writing speed is 4,000 words a day is what they have. Whether or not you think that's realistic, I have no idea, but uh, that's what they have, so that's what we'll work with. Um, it does list a number of skills that will apply, specifically artist calligraphy. You may want to figure out your default on that. Yep. Uh, but I think it actually, you'll roll against decks if you don't have it, so uh, that's going to be your, your baseline. Or uh, I'll regardless. just pick it up uh after uh, after this session uh it is that breaks Ten. down to 500 words an hour according to my maths um what i need to figure out here is you've got a small book i'm gonna call this a half page size whatever that is called journal size journal size if, if that's what it's called and i'm assuming that it's going to be about an inch and a half thick, maybe. So uh, given that this is parchment or vellum or whatever that they use at the time, um, it's a little thicker than modern paper. So how many pages? 200, 300, 400, something like that? Um, OK, so I currently have a blank journal book that was 50 sheets. I'm not sure where that came from, okay. but but uh, clearly, that's what I was uh, planning on doing. So clearly, I'm going to have to, you know, get more uh, more papers. Well, given that, let's call that a hundred sheets, and uh, instead of it being half full, it'll be mostly full. Now, the next part of that is how many words can you fit on one of those pages? Yeah. Well, so... I think ideally, he's probably going to look at it and try to reproduce it as freaking close as possible so that may end up requiring me to uh, purchase a larger book or, or whatever so i've got the same size and same number oh of you were going like to copy it into your journal yes okay so you don't actually have anywhere to copy it yet except into your journal yeah I, well i have a i have a blank journal book that i had purchased oh uh, for okay. that reason you hadn't actually put it okay gotcha it's been a while since we did that part Yep. So assuming 100 pages, regardless of what it says, um, then uh, what is going to be your guess as to how many words you could squeeze onto one page? And I realize uh, that's kind of a, I don't know. a tough question. Yeah, it's like, like I said, it's probably going to be as, as many pages that are currently on that page. So if there's why I'm uh, asking is I need to know how many how long it's going to take if it's 50, if it's 100 pages I need to know how many words are on the page so we know how long it takes to actually copy the book. Well, I suspect that since this is like a hunter's journal, it's going to fluctuate. Probably uh, it's going to yeah, be an average. Fair. Plus it's got pictures in it. Yeah. Uh I don't know. I mean, I'd have to let me, uh, People let me who read would that. have to tell me. I think well, no, as a normal gonna... print book has 400 words a page. Okay. I think. Phil can probably so, confirm Yeah, that. I have no idea. 
it's not going to be nearly that dense. So uh, we'll call it 200 a page then. I think that's a fair okay. guesstimate. All right, so I am going to write this down. We got 200 words a page is what I'm going to call it. And we get 100 pages. So uh, at 4,000 words per day or 500 words an hour, you can uh, get a couple of pages, a couple of pages per day, almost three. It's probably about right, given that you're doing calligraphy. All right. So uh, having established that as a baseline, uh, it also talks about taking extra time if you need to uh, be more accurate. Right and that sort of thing. So you can uh, calculate that into it. Uh, the way they do the long task is you make a roll per day and uh, your success or failure on that will determine whether or not you get a little extra done or you uh, lose lose hours because uh, you screwed something up. I am not going to make you roll every damn day, but uh, we'll figure something out in that regard. In the meantime, we'll just uh, consider that in process. Right. The only other long-term endeavors that I am aware of are uh, Hayden doing his uh, uh, navigation training with everybody. Uh, for now, we'll just stick with the old plan, but uh, I, I may work that into a more of an endeavor kind of situation. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Davino also has, uh, has been trying to uh, do some weapon customization and stuff like that, but he's not here, so he doesn't get to do any of that. And that is all the back end stuff. Finally, we are actually to the sailing part. Sailing away. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Captain Hayden, set a open course for the Virgin Sea. We're not far off. According to Google, a calculator, um, 220 words a page. Hmm. Is that at normal size? That's at like 14 point, double spaced. Hmm. Not 200 still makes sense in this case, because like you said, you know, it's sometimes it's probably going to be more. Sometimes it's going to be a lot less with pictures. It's all good. I've got about 33 days, uh, 34 days of, of three day, three pages per day. Uh, so Com Junkie asked me a question about what history would be appropriate for this area. And I'm trying to think, what are the choices? Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, is it? European expansion into the Americas or European expansion Spanish European. Well, well, if specifically or, uh, the uh, South of uh, the Americas or conquest of the Americas or exploration um, of the Americas. Well, my question is, does it even get that specific? I don't know. It says era or region. Okay, so which are which are you going for, era or region? Would, I mean, would just yeah. Americas be appropriate, or is that modern too broad? would be appropriate in this case because that era is modern. Uh, but and... yeah, um, there are, there are examples. They have like history Bavarian, history Irish, history New York State. So you could history Americas would uh, would probably make sense. So he would be aware of, like, you know, the... Uh, 1492, various... Columbus sailing the ocean blue. Uh, and, you could yeah. call it uh, colonial, before... colonial. Colonial American. Yeah. Okay. That would probably be appropriate. You know, like, I, yeah, somebody could say Ponce de Leon, and I go, I know that guy. Yeah. Right. Uh, he's been dead for... Well, I, I years, know so I don't that think guy. you know him. <laughs> I've heard of that. Unless he's an immortal like uh, that Solomon dude. 
which is possible. He could have. Is it he the one who looked for? Mm. I, ooh, I mean, that's that's I fountain of youth and all, etc. So, uh, getting to the actual sailing part now. Um, Time to crash. For the new guys, I will refresh, or actually, I'll just refresh everybody's memory because you've probably all forgotten. Um, the way this is going to work is we've got a number of rolls we're going to be making per day. It used to be a lot more of those rolls. I started to make them behind the scenes because it was easier. So right now, there are only three rolls that you guys are going to be making on a daily basis. Uh, the first being the day's business is the navigation roll which uh, Ronke has been making that role for uh, Hayden. And uh, he usually gets the uh, bonus of the plus two for the equipment that Rogers has lent him to use. Uh, the second two, we've got the, uh, the actual control role and then the scouting role. And uh, we had been splitting those up uh, I know before we were letting the chat do the roles for uh, for the control or something like that. Um, I'd rather split those up between the PCs at this point, but that means somebody is going to have to take ownership of that. Now, right now, uh, Davino was uh, handling the uh, scouting part. Um, since he's not here, he can't make that role, so somebody else will have to do it. So all that to say, let's uh, pick a guy to take ownership of a couple of these other roles. Who wants uh, who wants to handle the control and who wants to handle the scouting? Um, are we rolling it off of my our skill? Depends, because I don't think I have any of the appropriate skill. Well, no. Uh, I think in Spencer's case, he's not going to be making the role, or you're not going to be making the role for Spencer. You're just going to be making it for whoever's on watch or whoever's. This is an abstraction anyway. Although, just looking at that, my seamanship is 14. I'm actually pretty good. Is it? Yeah, because yeah. it's I got one point in it, and I'm really smart. Well, there you go. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I can take the uh, the scouting thing that that's fine you want to take scouting sure let's see uh, yes. and isn't rogers on light duties or can he do something here you can still make the role it just won't be him it personally, won't be him personally. Uh, handling it oh, i see well yeah, i have you some... yeah you should roll it I have uh, seamanship, so. All right, what is your... No, don't roll that yet. Well, too late. Oh, too, late. too late. All right, uh, so you are... All right, and since, uh, since you've got a 16, we'll go ahead and let you do that roll. You're, you'll be the guy. All right. All right. Uh, since Rogers has already made the seamanship roll, uh, why don't we go ahead and do the rest of them and let me get you the particulars. So, nav roll from Hayden is uh, going to be plus four at this point for reasons I will go into shortly. And of course, Hayden's not actually doing the navigation; he's just supervising, making sure someone does it right. As just a teaching. for the record, right now, this is uh, you guys just left at uh, sundown, so this is kind of a short day. Basically, you're you're rolling to see how you navigated out of Eleuthera. All right, so you've got that. Let's see, the control roll was going to be minus one for the chop and minus two handling for the vehicle and then minus one for being shorthanded. And that is a total of five, which changes your roll to a two under. Got it. 
And the lookout roll is going to be at minus two for speed and plus four for being in open water. So total of plus two. This is for ship handling. That one is for the perception. Now, and that was a perception based seamanship, I believe. Yep. Well, uh, honestly, it doesn't matter because it's going to be the same, but I'll still yeah. try to do the thing. Yay. Okay. So, uh, total is going to be 9, 10, 11, 12, minus 2 is 10. So, a uh, slight change to what I used to be doing is uh, I used to be. We were doing it the dungeon fantasy way, where you make the roll and uh, you either get a binary plus 10% or plus 20% or minus 10 or whatever, and I dislike that. So I am instead doing everybody is totaling their uh, margins together, and that is going to be applied as 1% uh, per up or down. Which means you're going to get an extra 10% on uh, on your uh, mileage for the day. Yay! So, good job. Never mind, uh, Rogers was a little... A little less than... A little less than uh, accurate. His injuries hurt. Now, the next part is... Okay, so it looks like your uh, totals are going to be... You're going to log 27 nautical miles for the evening, and that is going to put you uh, a little ways into the uh, channel. So... Where's our map? I missed the uh, share button. I should have zoomed in first. You should have zoomed in first. I don't know. Well, I'm zoomed I'm in at. now. We've got All two right, coconuts so, uh, and we're banging them together. Assuming that uh, we don't have problems like we did last time, uh, I'm just going to move you there ish, and that is about how far you got. Did it actually move the token? It's it did. Excellent. I saw the token, you know, shimmy. Hmm. Actually, no, it looks like you're probably more there-ish. Yeah. Okay, so at least on this map, that's uh, that's roughly the progress you made overnight. Uh, that is up to midnight, so uh, it will continue on. And uh, so the weather has uh, been cool, and the skies are clear with no moon, so it is really dark. And you've had a, a really strong southwest headwind, which uh, has meant that you're having to uh, beat into the wind. That is, you're having to tack back and forth. Um, your course is southwest by west, and you're headed toward uh, Chub Key in the Berry Islands, which is, I think, here on this map. This map is not very accurate, as I say every time. And uh, and as you can see, that's uh, just a bit northwest of Providence Island. And overnight, you have been following the north coast of Luthra and uh, staying well clear of the reefs. And by midnight, you can probably still see the lighthouse at Egg Island, which is the, the very end of the Eleuthera archipelago, just off the larboard quarter. And all seems to be well. Being in deep water, there's nothing to run into. So there's that. Uh, yes, yes. As you as you guys are uh, getting underway and getting getting situated again uh, and start talking back and forth as people are on watch. Actually, who's on watch at that point? Ah, excellent. Uh, for some reason, Spencer uh, has been talking about uh, uh, stuff that went on 
uh, earlier in the day with the interrogation and whatnot. And he uh, sort of randomly remembered that he had seen the name of the accuser in uh, in the interrogator's notes bum, or bum, in, bum. On, on the orders. And the name was Ufa Holst. Ufa Holst. Ufa Holst. Upon hearing the name Ufa Holst, uh, Sir Randall will recognize this name as uh, belonging to the Captain Morgan expert in Nassau, also known as Handsome Ned Long. And now, uh huh. He's claiming that we killed him. Yeah. <laughs> he accused like, you of his own murder. It's like, I was murdered. Wait, not I was murdered, but my, uh, wait, yes. <laughs> Unless like, that's actually not him. Hey, well, I mean, but interesting. So now you know why I needed you curiouser to ask that question. And curious. Uh, and, uh, Likewise, in uh, casual conversation as you guys are working, uh, Hooper, uh, that one, will reveal that uh, while you guys were uh, mucking about on Harbor Island, uh, he had been accosted by a very tall, scraggly, ugly fellow uh, who was over aggressively demanding to know where you guys were going. But uh, he ran away because he looked sketchy. And uh, he sort of apologetically asked ask, uh, Captain Hayden if uh, he should have said something earlier. Uh, kind of feels bad about not saying it, but he didn't want to cause a fuss. Figured maybe the guy just wanted to ride. Should have said something. And uh, as you guys approach midnight, uh, whoever is on the uh, on the lookout calls uh, calls out that there are ship's lights spotted two points above the starboard beam, uh, way in the distance. So probably uh, probably close to the horizon. Um, they don't appear to be closing, and you have no idea what kind of ship it is because it's really dark. Might be a ghost ship. It could be. Ship. It doesn't look like ghost lights. I don't know, Red. What do you think? Is it another ghost ship? I hope not. I kind of wanted I've to... seen enough ghost ships in my life. You've seen one. That's enough. Is it really? And with that, we get attacked by ghosts. Oh, yes, you're not. attacked by ghosts. Again. <laughs> All right. It is Wednesday, the 14th. And uh, you guys are trucking along in the. Uh, in the channel and we need to make a spoilage check because it is that time of the week where is my thing you have too many tables i got a lot of stuff um so in this case uh somebody first in roll 3d6 i think it should be mel but it's not because Mark she wasn't had fast hog enough. It. All right. He just said, for... "Oh, it's uh -huh. probably it's probably a good idea because I already have my dice in hand, and so I dropped them on my desktop, and it was two sixes and a five. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Keep that to yourself. Okay. Fortunately, uh, nobody detects any spoilage amongst the uh, provisions, so uh, you're good to go for now. Uh, let's see what's next. All right. Uh, so day's business. We need the uh, navigation roll. That will be at 
plus two for the equipment as normal, minus two because you're having to tack into the wind, plus two because you're following the coast, and minus two because there are a lot of rocks and shoals around here. So that is going to equal zero. That is Hayden. That's Hayden. Which roll? Uh, navigation, even. Time to roll an 18. That's not an 18. All right. That's that. Uh, control roll. Who was doing that? That was uh, Roger. No. was handling that. Uh, control is going to be minus three for the shoals, minus two for handling, minus one because you're shorthanded. That's going to be tough. So uh, six. five, six, minus six. Damn. You got a tough job. And you roll crap. Well, it's minus six. That's true. At least All he's right. got double digits. I mean, minus six for, for me, that's that's putting me at like eight. Actually, now that I say that, that is more than the... Uh... Uh-oh. Ramming speed. The thing. Control or stability rating. Stability rating. Yeah, stability rating three. So that is going to require an emergency action to avoid hitting, uh, probably getting grounded on a on a sandbar. Is that also at minus six? That will not be at minus six. That will be at minus two because of the uh, handling of the ship. And uh, let's see. I'll let uh, Rogers make the roll if you want to. Um, but it'll actually, unless you take over, uh, it'll actually be bold. That'll be, uh, handling the tiller at that point. Well, uh, um, although fine. doing it like, although doing it like minus two, it is. You can do it. 118. It'll be Come fine. It'll right be fine. up. <laughs> no, it's a 17. Cause it's you remember. Damn. Damn. That was pretty awesome. Well, you nailed that one. All right. Well, yeah, there was a bit of an incident there. You almost, uh, somebody didn't see that sandbar quite far enough out. But... All right. And so you avoided that. Let's see. All right. Lookout roll is just at minus one for the speed. Okay, why was it at other penalties last time? I don't recall right off the top of my head. All right, that one's good. So we've got a total of two up for the day. What were the uh, health rolls again if I was on light duty? Minus two. Hold that thought. And I actually did not put that in my notes to go over. Or did I? Nope, I sure didn't. That was dumb of me. Okay, so your total mileage for the day is going to be... Do, do, do. You're going to log 222 nautical miles. Quite a bit. Um, all right, so that is all the rolling out of the way. So let is, let's go ahead and do that, actually. Do the uh, healing roll. That was going to be at minus four to uh, health. Physician can assist. Not yet. I, I thought it was minus two if I was on light duty. Minus two for being at sea. So 
If you were not working at all, it would have just been minus two. Ah, understood. It's a rough ride. My health and my wow. strength are the wow. same. Well, all right then. You don't heal any today. But you don't make it any worse. Um, that's natural, natural healing, right? Uh -huh. So he would have gotten a plus one because of uh, being the care of a uh, competent physician, right. physician skill at 12 or greater. So he still well, would have failed, enough. but it would, have been, it would have been by two instead of three. Try to remember that next time. All right, so uh, for the day, yeah, I had to, uh, uh, the weather has been uh, clear with strong headwinds, which were uh, diminishing throughout the day. Uh, and uh, toward the end of it, it will uh, shift into a more favorable direction. Um, this day's uh, navigation is a little more interesting than the previous. Where's the thing? I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. So, uh, ultimately, what you guys are going to end up doing is, uh, from where Crash. you are, you are heading essentially to this point uh, at the end of Andros Island, where the uh, where there's a little cut in into the Grand Bahama Bank or Great Bahama Bank. Then you're going to uh, more like there. And then you're going to cut to the northish a little bit into the uh, bank and then straight down toward uh, this point, I think, or thereabouts. This map is weird, so it's kind of hard. But uh, so you're going to be crossing through this, uh, the shallows in the, the Great Bahama Bank. Now, you guys got good, uh, good charts of this area or at least decent charts of this area, you know how shallow it gets in here. And there are points in there where it is measured in uh, less than two fathoms. And you know that your uh, draft on this thing is just over one fathom. That's kind of problematic. This is uh, the real world depth. Uh, along the route that you're going for reference purposes. And uh, you guys are also aware that the, the sands in this area kind of shift around a bit, so it's really hard to get good charts this. of it. You guys got the closest equivalent. So uh, as uh, as it passed midnight, the uh, lights that you saw uh, from the ship looked like they were following the same course as you guys were, but uh, appeared to be dropping back a little bit uh, throughout the uh, throughout the early morning. Cool, we may have a boarding action. You guys uh, continued on southwest by west uh, toward the Berry Islands and uh, spot the lighthouse around uh, three in the morning or so. Uh, and at that point, uh, you, or just, just before sunup, you make your turn toward the, uh, west, northwest, and you, uh, pass the southernmost point of Chub Key, uh, which is, it was still kind of off on the horizon a little bit. It is just barely, cause these, these, uh, islands over there are really flat. So you gotta be kind of close to even see them at all. And then as the uh, sun rises, uh, you guys can see that there was a ship that was following, uh, but you could see that it had veered off to the northwest, which, uh, consulting the charts, you can see that they're basically going the other way around Barry Islands and uh, probably toward La Florida. And it is uh, flying a Spanish Navy ensign and is uh, probably a fifth rate. So, which means what? 32 guns. 
So we don't want to get in a tussle with it because it'll kick our ass. It will absolutely kick your ass. How many but dudes it, are on that boat? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know what the complement of that thing is. Probably a, a hundred or two. Between 100, 200, probably. I think between Lieutenant Rogers and Captain Hayden, they could take them. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Probably on patrol. Uh, and uh, just after sunup, you guys hit the, uh, the shoal waters of the Great Bahama Bank. And uh, being a clear day, the sun is out, and uh, you can see very clearly the uh, the depth of the water, and it is kind of amazing, really. You can see water as far as far as you can see anything, and but below you, it's maybe a couple of fathoms, so you know, ten twenty feet. And uh, as you guys. Uh, end up with uh, Chub Key one point off the starboard quarter. You make your turn back southwest by west and you are headed basically straight across at that point. That is, your course is straight across because you're having to uh, beat to windward the entire day because the wind is going absolutely the wrong direction. Which yeah, is okay. super irritating. Keep an eye out for Selkies. Although, you know, Sir Randall will probably be calling them mer people. You guys are aware that there are a couple of spots uh, along the way where it does get shallow, shallow enough to be concerning. Um, and since you're having to tack into the wind, that means you're having to go back and forth along that course line. And so you have to be really careful about hitting, uh, uh, paying very close attention to what's coming up. Fortunately, with awesome. the sun, you can actually uh, you can actually see it coming. But the question that needs to be asked at this point is: Do you shorten sail so you're going slower, or do you push it? Well, how how overconfident are the the people in charge feeling? Really overconfident, but um, in terms of penalties. Uh, what sort of difficulty are we looking at navigating uh, these waters? And controlling. Well, you've already made the roll, but uh, it uh, the effect that it will have is that the faster you're going, the harder it's going to be to spot a shoal coming up that you need to dodge. So if you slow down, you can knock off a point of that penalty and uh and it won't be as bad and yeah you know, what sort of penalties are we looking at well from like two to one probably i mean really the ship only goes as fast as you can bloody run most of the time anyway then we've got um we've got red shirt out the back swimming and pushing us along faster Full sail. Captain says full sail. Yeah, this isn't going to end badly at all, is it? At all, is it? Absolutely. Full sail. All right, then. Let's see if the dice back me up. No, I failed that. I choose to fail that. Actually, no. This is a new day, isn't it? Yeah, this is day two. Yeah, now I'm feeling good. Full sail. All right. Well, uh, this was the this was the day where you almost hit something, and uh, that means it would have been one worse, according to what I had on there. So would that have changed anything? No, it would not have. Lucky bastards. It's not luck, it's all skill. Well, technically, yeah. But I know all what right. that feeling is like when you're sailing over reefs and stuff and you can actually see the reef under the boat. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so uh, you guys uh, are basically Hayden doing the navigation will be estimating that you guys are gonna you're gonna hit the end of the Great Bahama Bank uh, before sundown just a little bit before sundown maybe a few hours so uh you're not gonna have to deal with this overnight thankfully uh because right at the end of that is the where the the reefs are are need to be more carefully navigated uh on the exit uh so you guys uh go on through the day and you're having to tack quite a bit which is a pain in the ass um and the day wanes and a few hours before sundown what did we get on the control or on the spotting we had two up on that so uh a few hours before the sun goes down uh you guys are in the process or, or getting close to the uh the end point where you're gonna have to navigate the reefs and three points off the larboard quarter you get the call sail and uh yep there, there sure oh there's a rather large ones right in front of us thank you so that to clarify uh off the larboard quarter means it's behind you it's a to the, ninja uh, ship. To the left. Yep, because larboard equals port, and port has four words just like left. Uh, not too much longer. You can uh, determine that this is, in fact, a sloop of some kind, single-masted. And uh, you will also note that uh, they are turning in your direction. So they were going the opposite direction you were, and they are in the process of turning around. I suspect they are piratical types. A sloop is much larger than us, isn't it? I can never Depending, tell the difference. It's, there's not a standard, so it's kind of annoying. Um, but uh, this one doesn't look to be a lot bigger. Maybe the same size ish. Okay. Right. So, you guys, uh, it looks like you guys spotted each other at about the same time. Are they flying any flags? They are not currently flying colors, which isn't really unusual. Why has it got to be colors with you people? What do you mean, you people? What do you mean? You know what you mean, you people. Okay, uh, so, Captain, what's the plan? Meet quarters. No. After that. You could turn and fight. You could try to run away. You could uh, try to hide or pull some shenanigans. We don't know. Is there's there's nowhere to hide here. There um, kind of is, although you guys are a little too close for it. If you guys had, for example, gotten over the horizon and, or at least partly over the horizon, hold down. You could like pull the sails down and maybe they won't be able to spot the bear poles. Or, you know, coincidentally, a uh, a terrible squall breaks out and conceals us from view. That's another matter. Can uh, <clears throat> Rogers use tactics in any uh, helpful way? I suspect a lot of people would try to do that. So uh, that yes. Let me think. Um, which one of you? Because undoubtedly Hayden and, and Rogers are both going to coordinate on that. Um, 
Which one of you has the higher tactics? Well, mine's 11. We don't have time for whatever they, they're they selling, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's lose them. 16. Damn. All right, Hayden's the tactics man. Rogers, you can roll an assist. Need to improve that. 11. Oof. I hate 11s. All right, good for the assist, which means we got a success by five. Ah. Let's see. They may just want to borrow some gray poupon. So they can get their uh, own gray poupon. There are a couple of things you can consider at this point. Um, your rig is a basically a, a square rig, and it is not great into the wind at all. Uh, so you are you are having to uh, you're having to tack a lot, and you're really slow. Their rig is fore and aft, and it is a lot better into the wind than yours. So they're going to have the advantage in that regard. The next point is that uh, that being a sloop, it's probably got a little deeper draft than yours. Depending on how big it is, it may have a little more trouble with the uh, shoals than you do. Possibly. That one's not as certain. However, uh, using the spyglass, you can... Uh, uh, observe it a little bit more and determine that it looks like it is riding a little dirty. Like it may have a uh, cargo. Which will definitely lower the uh, lower the water line or raise the what, water line, I guess. What time into the day are we talking about? You have a few hours before sunset. And they're faster than us. Um if we were to estimate the interception, would it be dark before they get to us? If you do really well, maybe. Now, the other tactical consideration here is they have to turn around, and that's going to take a number of minutes for them to actually pull that off, depending on their uh, their level of skill. And uh, so you're going to have an advantage, a head start in that regard. So you could maybe get away. And the course that we're <clears throat> we're sailing, is it unusual to see a ship um, sort of following this course, or it's not unexpected to see ships here? Uh, it is less than usual which is part of the reason why you're coming this way and probably also part of the reason why they decided to come after you because you're probably not expected to be here and they might figure you're up to no good. Did we have someone with intuition? Did we? Yeah. Let me look. Me. Oh yeah. Mark, you've got intuition. You should use intuition. Remember you have it. Hmm. Was that a that wasn't a per session thing. That was just a whenever, wasn't it? I think so. I think it's whenever. Maybe, I don't know. I, I think up. it's I think it's whenever. Whenever you're presented with different options. So Hayden will um summon Sir Randall and he'll explain the situation. Um you know, give the uh, the tactical situation um, and make his suggestions. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Uh, well, what are the, the like... options? Run, fight, yeah. hide? Yeah, run, fight, hide. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's a secret intelligence. So oh. you roll that in the box. What's in the box? 
his intuition. It's a roll in the box. I don't know what I have for number of good choices and bad choices. Well, yeah. You got a guess in that regard. All right. Well, uh, when presented with the uh, tactical situation, you kind of you're you're kind of in agreement with the uh, run scenario. Your gut says beat feet. They look like up to no good. It's a problem. I just don't. We shouldn't desire to take on. Well, sir, I trust your gut. You have uh, proven insightful before. We shall make best speed and run. Is there a way we can put weapons in that direction of travel so that if it comes to it, we have cannons pointing towards them? Well, that's uh, that's another matter. So I wanted to have that discussion with you know the master gunner uh, about what guns were on deck. Uh, but, uh, unfortunately he wasn't here, so we didn't, um, you guys have gun ports to the left and right, but there are no fore and aft gun ports. So you would have to make them, you would have to put a hole so the gun could fire through it, either that or elevate the gun somehow. And that could be dangerous. So theoretically. Yes, but that would take some effort and preparation, which, you know, you guys do have prep points, but, uh, which I keep forgetting. Where did I put those? So Hayden will say, Mr. Rogers to quarters let's have the crew assemble and let's let's have them prepare for combat let's run some training drills just in case it turns nasty my eyes sir and i will direct thusly All right, so you guys are going to run. Uh, this will be a chase. In case you hadn't figured that out already. Well, we know now. They're just wanting to tell us that our, sh yeah, ask us if they'd, we'd like to extend our ship warranty. Have Did you, you heard get the, uh, the good news from our Lord and Savior Cthulhu? And we need the other guy. I don't know if we need it. All right. You need, yeah, it. You know, you need a token great. for the um, for the uh, track. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Let's see, where did I put those? Da, da, da. No tokens. Why do you actually have grid on this? Because he wants one. It resizes so... the images to fit those grids. Fair enough. Oh, so he likes grids. So extreme range is 18 yards. It is not. But I'm about to get into that. It doesn't have snap to grid on, does it? No, yeah, no, we're fine. All right, so uh, Chase, we have a uh, bad of zero. No additional penalties at this point. We got enough already to start with. Um, Conditions, we have uh, speed plus four for both ships. Uh, they are going to get a plus two for their better rigging uh, in this case. Uh, in the Great Bahama Bank, there's not a lot of chop. 
and no current to speak of, so no penalties for the C state. Um, but you will have a minus two yourselves for an unfavorable wind. Uh, actually, both of you will. Which is going to mean totaling... Plus two uh, for us, plus four for plus them. Plus two for you and plus four for them. You need to unlock tokens. Right. Damn it. That really not... That really needs to not be default. All right, sorted. Okay, uh, okay. So the uh, interval for this chase is going to be half hour rounds, roughly. Um, and for the record, uh, the range bands are not going to be as listed. Um, I am. Basically, the way that's going to work is the extreme is going to be hull down over the horizon, and uh, long is going to be hull up at the horizon, and then medium, short, close. Close is going to be effective cannon range. Uh, short is going to be long cannon range. So basically, you want to stay out of short, uh, or you could potentially get shot at. Uh, you will have six rounds before the lights go out. Fortunately, you were close enough to the uh, exit point that you can probably just take off. Let's see. And... What I'm going to do for everybody else is uh, one of them, one of you guys is going to be taking charge, probably Hayden, uh, with the ship handling, and uh, everybody else will do kind of like a skill challenge thing where we'll kind of figure out what skill you, how you want to contribute, and uh, and you'll make that roll, and it'll be a, a forced assist to the uh, to the driver. And with that, we shall get underway. The uh, enemy's first maneuver is going to be static because he is in the process of turning about, which is going to give you an automatic additional uh, range band, which will put you at... I don't think it's automatic. I think yeah, they're just automatic. minus five on their roll. It's... If it's static, it's uh, automatic range. Uh, now you're no, ready. static means you get no speed bonus on your chase roll. Uh, yeah, if your rival picks a non-static maneuver, he gets an extra range shift no matter who wins the contest. So right. technically, yeah. Daniel is right, uh, but he's also wrong in that there are not going to be a plus four because they don't get the speed bonus on their chase roll. Well, that... Uh... That's a different matter. So, yeah, that uh, means they're going to be plus two, no, zero, minus one. Actually, was it, did you say it was minus five? No, there's no minus five. Right. Just no speed. Yeah. I thought yeah. That was static crazy. maneuver means you get no speed bonus on your chase roll. If your rival, although in this case, this would be where their rival uh, picks a non-static maneuver, he gets an extra range shift no matter who wins the contest. That is three if he wins by 10 plus, two if he wins by five to nine, or one otherwise. So he's going to be at even. You guys are going to be at uh, plus two, I guess it was. He said these are half an hour rounds. Uh-huh. So he's going to be static for half an hour? It's not that he's going to be static for half an hour. It's that uh, he's... Because he's having to turn about, and it takes a while to turn about, it's not exactly instant. Um, um, technically, he's I think putting he himself at a, as a, at a disadvantage. What was that? I think he's technically at minus two because you gave us a minus two for the the, the crappy weather or a crappy wind. He had the and, plus two for the air rigging, and a plus two for the speed. 
No, plus four for the speed. Yeah, they're even your plus two. So Brian's roll was wrong. It's not a plus four, it's plus two. Okay, now, so I have you guys starting at long because of your uh, spotting roll, which means you're actually going to bump right into extreme. We're going to blow them away. You may actually just slip right out. Unless that roll really well for some reason. All right, so you got a damn, you got a success by nine. Jesus. No, it's right. going to be success seven. by seven. That nine. wasn't that wasn't a roll. I don't know how they came there. So I, I didn't actually do that roll. I think that was a drag and drop. Oh, that's navigation anyway. That's not ship handling. All right, so uh, the... Hayden is going to be in charge. He's going to get the. Uh, he's going to be making the ship handling roll for the control roll. Everybody else is going to contribute. How will Rogers contribute? Uh well. Um, what can my what, seamanship what, do in all this? What, what's his leadership skill? That's awesome. I mean, seamanship is possibly probably better, but. Seamanship is perfectly fine, and uh, I mean, that's just your basic ship operation. If you're snappy on all the moves, then uh, then you can definitely be helpful in that regard. Well, seaman, uh, leadership's 14. And what's your seamanship? 16. Oh, yeah, you definitely went to 16. <laughs> uh... And I did not write those down, did I? No. Uh, All right, so, so you right. can go ahead and roll that one. Uh, at a minus two? No minus. Okay. Not in your case. Wait, he's injured, though. Uh, that's not going to affect him in this case. Okay. Maybe it should. If we were using tougher rules, it might have. Okay, so there's one up. Uh, Sir Randall, how is he going to contribute? He's going to dive into the uh, I guess the I ocean will and swim back. Uh, try and keep everyone's spirits up. Do you have leadership? Oh, I don't know. I thought uh, he did. What do you mean you don't know? Do. He's your character. Yeah, I do. I have so many skills, it's hard to keep up with all of them. I know how that feels. How many assists can you have on the roll? <laughs> we certainly won't get smashed across the rocks or blown to pieces, people. <laughs> one per PC in all. this case. Uh, yeah, so that's a minus one. All right, uh, so zero. How will Clug contribute? Uh, do Do we have to use like a unique skill, or we can we re reuse? No, it? no, no, not in this case. Okay. Um. Let's see. Just don't okay. use a crappy skill, because if you fail, you might fall off of something. Well, Claude, all of Claude's good skills involve like combat and stuff and being sneaky. So, um, all right. So, would you would you allow a climbing roll to climb up the rigging to keep a better like lookout and call out whether you know, kind of call out whether it looks like we're gaining or losing, you know, distance or anything. That would be kind of perception like, if that's better. Um, perception is one point less, so Claude's climbing is 13, perception is 12. Seamanship is 11, so. I suppose if you look at it from the standpoint of over that 30-minute period, you're having to climb a lot, then, uh, you're sort of doing an endurance-based climb. I could, uh, I could live with that. Okay, I'll up be and glad down, to up do it. Yeah, I'll be glad to do like yeah, up and down, and then hop down and go help do stuff. You know. Mm -hmm.
Ooh, barely. Yeah, even. You nearly Just fell out of the rigging. How will little, uh, Spencer... Getting a little winded. How will Spencer contribute? The only thing that I can really see there is seamanship. I mean, I could... Well, I suppose I... Uh, I guess I could go with perception to sort of be like, you know, maybe if he's at the uh, at the nose of the, the ship calling out, oh, yeah, I'm going to go left. I'm going to go right because of uh, dangerous shoals or whatnot. Now, seamanship is perfectly fine here if you want to use it. This is definitely a seamanship uh, incident. All right, so it looks like we're two up for the uh, final roll. Or two up additional. I kind of want to fail this. <laughs> what a jerk. You should... Uh tell Sir Payne to keep talking then. He's doing a great <laughs> job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, keep the stop trying to cheer me up. <laughs> You're doing great. Keep talking. Randall should have used sex appeal really. oh, instead of leadership. So... All right, so this is the uh, contest. This is the, the final chase roll. So Hayden, ship handling. Uh, what's her final tally going to be? Uh, plus, plus zero, two, right? plus two. Why is it plus two, plus two? I know we got a plus two, but I thought our ship handling was at minus two because of it's a ship. Uh, this, is, this isn't a, that kind of control roll in this case. Well, I guess it does typically say that, though. But that oh, should right, apply yeah, to both. So. Yeah, so we'll just stick with the rules as written there. Yeah, so it's plus two for us, plus two for the speed, and all that, and then minus two for the handling. Is that right? Yeah, so total of plus two. Plus two. Wasn't the sea conditions pretty shitty as well? Uh, not here. Yeah, that's why we're that's why we're at plus two instead of plus four. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, this it's the wind because you guys are having to beat into the wind. So overall plus two. Mm -hmm. Yep. 18, 18, 18. Not like you're going to suck at it or anything. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm really hoping for Mel's a bad dice. roll. He's going to borrow Mel's dice. It's going to be a mixture of Mel and Nosh's dice. Yep. Divide by zero. Do you not want that? Good God. Well, of course, Daniel's here's my pick. Well... I am British, and it's almost tea time, so maybe I'm distracted and that we're having tea <laughs> while doing this. All right, well, given uh, all their advantages in this case, uh, they weren't able to get around quite fast enough to, uh, to keep up with you that way. So uh, due to the fact that they're having to do a static maneuver to start with, uh, you get the free range shift and then you get one for the win. Looks like, wait, no, yeah, that's by five. So you have, uh, we're now we're just to on get over the horizon. Being, you must have no, snapped no, to no. greet on. No, we what were on do? long. We said so we got the automatic one. And then he, so uh, it, you said it's one more shift. So that puts it as distant. Yeah. So we're not quite at beyond visual. Oh, you know, I forgot that was even there. Let's run with it. <laughs> okay, well, so the truth is you guys, you guys have dipped below the horizon. You cannot see them, but you know they're still back there. So... So they we can see the top of their masts the or something? No, you don't see any of the mast. At, at extreme, you were just seeing the tops. So you are officially over the horizon. That should be beyond visual. But it's not. It's yeah, BBR is different in this case. I'm totally arguing with the GM just for stupid reasons. 
Okay, so do we get another uh, another round of the chase where they actually have their uh, they're no longer doing a static maneuver? Maybe you can uh -huh. catch up. They get they get one chance, one chance to try and close it. So uh, All right. we'll do one more round. Their Randall screw up again. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me review those totals. It's probably going to be the same. So. Plus four speed for you. Uh, minus two for the wind. Minus two for the uh, plus zero. handling. So we're currently at plus zero then. Without the uh, assist, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, what are they at? They are going to be at plus four for speed, plus two for their better rigging, minus two for the wind, and uh, any potential assists they might have on their end. So that so is uh, plus, plus four. four. Okay. Let's see. You know, hey, I have the poetry skill. I could try to uh, knock out a quick poem that... that uh, to, to help everybody. Do that. All right. I'm going to screw with you a little bit. Um, uh, so in this round, you have to actually get through the uh, Should, briefs. Shouldn't you be rolling for um, obstacles and stuff like that on the chest? I'm table? just putting an obstacle in front of you. Like narrowing the passage? and. There's no narrowing the passage on the ocean. There absolutely is. At any rate, you're about to narrow the passage because you got to go through the reefs. Huh. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, I think Spencer's attempt to assist may be to utilize his coincidence ability. But I don't know mm. if I want to do that. No, I'll just stick with seamanship. Somebody could potentially use navigation here to uh, read the charts and make sure you don't run into anything stupid. I certainly couldn't because, you know, I got a nine in navigation. Are we really reversing? I want to. Why? No, we, we're going to... We're going to do a stunt. Oh, God. What kind of a stunt are you thinking of here? He's uh, going to hit a reef and go airborne. Like uh, we're in the 1725 version of Fast and Furious. Stunt escape. We don't have well, much if options. If all you do is a move and you beat him, then uh, you're going to escape anyway. But uh, what kind of stunt are you thinking? Well, I'm not thinking of any stunt. I can't justify an actual in-game stunt that we could do. Not that we, eh. not that we need to do a stunt. It's not desperate. We're like blowing these people away. Right. Okay. Well, I gave us a plus one. So, what is Claude doing? We'll go backwards. Um, hmm. So considering there's nothing really to see at this point, Claude will stop climbing all, all over the place. Oh, there's, uh, there's plenty to see. The reefs are coming up, so they definitely need to look out. Oh, okay. So yeah, Claude will, but Claude doesn't have, I guess Claude could do like a general perception and climb up he and could. look out yeah. and keep an eye out for reefs and try to talk yell down if we're getting too close. That's legit. Watch out for Selkies. What? Oh, close. So we're, we're at plus zero. And now it's time for Sir Randall to screw something up. 
Here I come to save the day. No, guys, it's not what I meant. What I meant to say was... Damn. You guys are the best ever! <laughs> so, I guess that's plus two. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> and then Lieutenant Rogers comes in and needs to critically fail, so we go to zero. All right, what's Rogers right, going to do? Right. Well, I'll do another seamanship roll. See, it was all that. a setup. It was all planned. It, I wanted to make it sound so bad that when it really came, the truth came out, it just hit hit home so much better. Really, all you did was quit trying to encourage people and just say, more grog if we get away. Uh, we, we tapped the kegs. <laughs> Should be, yeah. So we're at plus three on our chase roll. All right. All right, you Let's want to roll now? At uh, that, that, that. Yep, go ahead and roll it. Damn, you tried to screw that one up. Maybe you'll get your uh, get your hopes there, Brian. Yeah, we have to so uh, drag this out tonight. Well, unfortunately, uh, you can't see if they're uh, if they're still there. But you don't see them get any closer. Maybe they were a ghost ship. What do you think, Red? Better not be. They're going to suddenly materialize in front of us. All right. What uh? What do you think? Uh, you think they're gone? No. We're going to gonna keep going you're just gonna plug it away and don't care we're, we're just sailing anyway and it's like good training all right as it happens uh not that you could see but uh once you guys hit the reefs they decided uh they weren't gonna push their luck there So uh, you guys will keep pushing on as hard as you can, but uh, you never see them come back. So Randall, we lost them. Shall we turn around and find them again? That's a joke, by the way. So uh, you still had a couple of hours before uh, the sun went down. And uh, you left the Great Bahama Bank, and you could see the depth of the water just drops right off after that. And you are now in the in the deep in the uh, the Florida Channel. And you know when you hit it because that that current hits, and whoever's on the helm at the time can feel it. Is you just hit the Gulf Stream and you're going the wrong way. But fortunately, the winds kind of turn around and give you a little assist. Well, but you never see the uh, you never see the sloop show back up, so you don't know what happened. I don't happened think it that. actually existed. I think it was all imaginary. It was mermaids or mermen. Sheer delusion. They're called Selkies. I can tell you about so them. You guys are. Somewhere around there, I suppose. 
and the evening will give over to the morning. So the super dangerous part of the shortcut is over then. Yep. That's disappointing. I was hoping we were going to wreck. Yeah, if the winds had actually been a little more favorable, you could have gotten through that a lot faster. But well, uh, you guys decided to push it, so... Well, next time, Dr. Spencer, um, to enlighten you, I'll do it blindfolded. All right, and next day. Ta-da! Where are we? Let's start faster. with... Uh, accelerator. Start with the navigation roll. We've got uh, plus two for equipment, minus two because you are once again going to end up beating into the wind. Uh, more on that later. And uh, minus one for the clouds, so it's kind of hard to see the sun. And you have a strong opposing current at this point for another minus one. So that's a total of minus two to the navigation roll. Who wants to make this roll? Aiden's teaching people. Training. It's going to be a good day for training because you got a lot to go over with the current and all that. Uh, Claude did comment that probably should have paid more attention than navigation class. <laughs> What's the default for navigation? Don't. That's what the quad would be running at. Um, How are we doing that last time? I think it's minus five. IQ minus five. I don't think you actually have to roll teaching if it's 12 no. above. This is going to be great. So minus five? That's uh, what it looks like. Yeah, I'm trying I got to remember a, if uh, I've got a we were just... 14 IQ and I don't have any points in nav C and I got a nine. So I think Hayden was assisting or something. Wow, that's not that bad. Not too bad. No, I mean it's not a success. Well, no. but Hayden's supervising, so he'll watch people do the navigation, and if they screw up, he's going to say no. This is the course that we should have done. Well, Claude yeah, learned some Claude. stuff. He's just giving people the opportunity to roll a success. <laughs> uh, I just saw her her mods. <laughs> All right, is uh, is Hagen going to make his own roll? Yes. All right, what did we end up at? Uh, minus two? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. So she actually killed my uh, four. Yeah, it could have been worse. minus seven. Okay, so that's uh, four up then. We'll call uh we'll call uh Claude's uh, failed assist. Yeah. So three up. All right. That's uh navigation control for minus one for the chop and minus two for the ship's handling and minus one because you guys are still short handed because some people are on light duty. That is a total of minus four to the control roll. Rogers, I have at you. Lieutenant Rogers can make that roll. All righty. What roll am I making? Sorry. Minus four. Uh, uh, what seamanship. skill? Sorry. Seamanship. Or ship handling. Minus four. Well, all right. Better than minus six. Mm hmm. Or not. Going to be one of those days. All right. So we are two up at this point. And the lookout roll. Minus two for speed. Uh, plus four because you're in open water right now. So total plus two. Groovy. And this is perception with seamanship, which is basically the same. So I'm just going to roll it. Four up. That's a total of six up for 6%. Applying the bonus. 
All right. Nice. Never minding the uh, the difficulties here. That uh, how did you do for this day? So that's uh, this is day three. That's is that right? Oh, I'm looking at the damn total. Uh. Yeah, okay, quite a bit less. Anyway, we'll hit that in a second here. All right, um, so that's that. So you guys uh, did a little better than you were going to. We'll end up logging uh, a little over 100 miles today. And that is because... Uh, so, moderate winds from the west today uh peter out to practically nothing around midday in fact uh everybody was starting to freak out a little bit because you're starting to think you're about to be becalmed uh in the middle of you know the florida the florida channel with the uh reverse conveyor conveyor belt but a little after midday uh the wind started to pick back up and shift around to the southeast which was a little bit better uh, otherwise, the it was a little cloudy all day and, and drizzly, so uh, it's also been a bit coolish. It was warm. It's warmed up a little bit, but when I say cool for the Caribbean, we're talking like the lower to mid 60s. Man, that sounds awesome. So, like, you kind of want a jacket? What's that in non-freedom units? Uh, I don't recall right off the top of my head. It's half of 30, 15 ish. Wow, that's kind of cold. 15 degrees. I don't know if that's right. 15.5 that's, that's and numbers. 60 degrees. Yeah, it was close. If it's like, you know, I don't know, 65, uh, say, Rather than just 60, it's like closer to 18 degrees. So uh, you guys carried on west by southwest uh, after you had left the Bahama Bank last night. And uh, you've been basically fighting the current and the wind all day. Uh, and otherwise, you're out in the complete deep water, nothing to see here at all. Well, there's water to see. And Other than water. Suckies. Yeah, there's I'm a lot of water. Suckies, water, 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 water mermaids. Here, not to drink. You didn't. You didn't see any selkies today. Not today. But that we know of. Right now, I need for Mel to give me a D two roll, or just make an even odd roll. I don't care. Done, done, done. A D two roll. How do I do that? Is it just I don't know. Plus... If I... Can you do it? Slash die one D two. Yes, you I can. Just... I just draw. Okay. All right. There you go. All right, and I need you to make an IQ minus six roll. Now she's going to have, you know, ha, 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 again. Or why? Yeah, I'll tell you what, about what that is eventually. All right. Uh, Unless he forgets. Wow, the Bahamas is actually less tropical than I thought. Well, it is a bit further north, depending on where you are. Yeah, the Bahamas would be, yeah. That's a fair distance from the equator. Yeah, the equator is all the way down to friggin' Brazil, I think, so... Yeah. It goes through Ecuador, bottom of Colombia. All right, so, uh, Claude is sitting sitting with the old man. 
uh, on top of a country grave as he is uh, preparing tea. And the two of you are speaking in English, as you usually do, because you share that language in common. And the old man points to the grave, which has a name on it that you can't quite make out, that? and says, This is me. I must be dead. I don't feel dead. I don't know why that is. Perhaps I am now only a dream. My mind swirls, unfocused. I can't seem to wake. And as he continues making tea, he points to some shadows moving around a short distance away in some kind of graveyard, churchyard, ruin thing, whatever this is. And he says, they search for the skull, but they will not easily find it. Okay. And he pours some tea and offers the teacup and says, drink this. It's important. Okay. Claude will... Uh... None. Claude has no choice because Claude is dreaming, dreaming and has failed to uh, go lucid. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, Claude drinks tea and the lights go all red and things get all bendy. And the old man's voice echoes and repeats as he says, there's something I needed to tell you. What was it? Ah, yes. Don't go to the boathouse. You're walking through a red forest and the grass is tall. It's just drained. Most of the blood is washed away. There's a house in the distance, cedar and pine. You've been there before. You're not alone. There's a man. You see him. You go to him. You know him like a memory of tomorrow. And then you wake up. And it takes a second or two for the red to fade away. Okay. Can I get like all of that stuff you just said? I tried to type it out, but I don't type that fast. Yeah, don't don't bother trying to type that out. Uh, where did I put that? Okay, thank you. I was thinking of you. I knew you'd want it. Um, <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, was, that was you were asleep. Uh, this was your evening uh, down period which was the D2 role. Okay, so Claude will basically like sit straight up in the little cubby hole and um, rub his eyes and uh, hop out of the bunk and immediately make a beeline for Sir Randall. Uh, which shift is he on? Let's see. Sarandal is on the other shift, which means he's working right now. So he's awake. Okay. Claude will run up. Uh, Sarandal, Sarandal, Sarandal. It's important. Yes. Uh, Claude There's will. There's a donkey behind you. <laughs> oh, look, mermaid. <laughs> mermaid, I knew it. <laughs> Oh, it'd be so tempting to do that to him. Hang on. All you'd have to do is get somebody to dress up and then pop around a corner at him. And then he shoots them. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> that would be funny. Um, so Claude will basically relay the dream and uh, the fact that he thinks the old man is now dead and people are hunting for the, the golden skull and uh, will relay as much as he can, you know, in the fog of dream, you know, of dream to wakefulness, relay what the old man said about the forest and the house. Is Claude literate? I don't remember. Um, Hang on. I think, so. well, hang on. Maybe not. I just have native spoken English and French according to the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. She can't read. May have to get uh, somebody else to write it down for him. Yeah. Well, um, he'll kind of... Uh, I'll, I'll be... Listen, yeah, obviously he's going to whatever he tasks he's at. I'm taking his last 
the he's a not, slacker. He's just yeah, exactly. He's thing. like, well, this is definitely much more interesting than whatever I'm I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so he'll listen intently. He'll ask some questions, and is there? I don't know. Uh, can I? So does it seem obvious that the uh, old man is dead, or is there any clues as to who might be you know, chasing based on the dream? I don't know if there's anything I can intuit from from her uh, dream, or even is there a skill roll against the riddle? Yeah, for no. Claude's uh, perspective. Not really. Yeah, from Claude's perspective the people that the old man pointed to were shadows. So there would be no detail to relay, just that they were there and they, and he said they were looking for the skull and that he didn't say that he was dead, but he pointed to the grave and he said he must be dead. And he's uh, a little confused about it. Hmm. Um, well, the, um, are, is she feeling any particular pulling right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, if she knows that uh, she only feels that when she holds the skull. Oh, I'll hand her. Uh, well, right, well, do you have your skull? Do you feel any pulling? <laughs> uh, Claude will uh, pull it out of the little pouch that he keeps it in and hold it and see if he feels anything. And then uh, he does. Is it the same direction? Uh, yeah. Particularly stronger, you know, more, you know, defined. And I'll try and find where our charts are and whoever's got them to ask uh, to lay a uh, uh, line of triangulation down. Go to the go to the compass. Get a bearing. Yep. Yeah. Um. Well, quick question. And time and location. Yeah. Quick question for the GM and. Uh, the talk, discussion about a house with of cedar and pine. You said you've been there before. Been there before. Does that trigger any memory for Claude? No, it doesn't. Uh, Claude was seeing some weird imagery, trees and red things, and it wasn't really. It was not very clear. But uh, but no, nothing. None of it seemed familiar at the time. Okay. So mission accomplished. Successfully distracted Sir Randall from his tasks. A wealth uh, distraction, considering what I was probably doing was mindless and probably I not too. Uh, uh, not not urgent. Uh, important. There you go. And with that, we crash. All because I didn't do my job. Because you didn't do your job. You had one job. Let's keep your finger in the leaking hole. And <laughs> we sank. Let me see here. That was day two. Cryptography wouldn't play into that with it. No. That's identifying or figuring out cracking codes. Right. All right. So All right, let's just before we move on to uh, day four, let's take a break. No. Yes. Because I need to process oh, something. Uh, man, it takes too long to get here. We need to make the boat go faster. Okay, we're back. Yay. So, correction. I, uh, I did not actually check to see what would happen if you went through the, uh, the bank at full sail. And uh, I was not prepared. Play. So, uh, actually, you are more like here.
So that we said, be there tomorrow. Uh, your expectation is you'll probably make port tomorrow. And get situated. Do, do, do. Damn it. That was freaking, yeah. Friday, 16 February. Uh, we need navigation roll. Navigation roll is going to be at plus two for equipment, minus three for clouds, plus two because it's coastal, and minus one for strong opposing current. Total plus of. Zero. Ooh. I'm hurting. Plus zero. Oh. Having pains. Now I've got to look up what my penalty is. Is Rogers getting ahead of himself? Oh, that was the uh, healing. Did I forget to do that last time? I did, didn't I? Did, didn't I? No, we did the healing last time. Um, I don't think we did for day three. Uh, yeah, what was the minus four? Because of uh, being at sea and light duty and, mm -hmm. and the did, apocalypse. And did, did you add the plus one for uh, for? Who I did not. Being... Yeah, so, so I yeah, succeeded. So, so... Booyah! And what? Well, I get one hit point back. I think yes. That's it, yeah. Amazing. Well, it'll be better once we get to Havana. Oh, wait, no, you got a bunch of stuff you need to do in Havana. Yeah. Meanwhile, well, Bold is like, well, while you're running around, I'm going to break out a hammock and sleep. He won't be in a rocking boat at that point, though. Uh, So, yeah, navigation roll uh, from Hayden. Uh, Since and... Hayden is suffering some chronic pain and he's coughing, he's going to say, uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, would you care to take the helm on this one? I'm feeling a little under the weather. I think I'll stay in my bunk. Well, that means he's going to sure. stay up through his shift. No, make Randall do it instead. Ooh, that'd be funny. I want Randall to crash us. Well, now he doesn't have to stay up the whole shift. He just has to do the nav. Which it is bloody cloudy today, so he's not going to be able to see much of the sun either. Hence the penalties. What do I need to roll? Straight navigation. Excellent roll. Oh. <laughs> wrong skill. On the wrong skill. Oh. I was going to say you could keep it. Or you can take the new one. Uh, Which yeah. is actually better. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is the day's navigation. That is eight up. Uh, control is going to be minus one, minus two, minus one, minus four total. Uh, so one for chop, two for handling. One for being shorthanded still. That's ship handling. And that will be or the control ship, role. Whichever, yeah, steamship, ship handling. Minus four. Yeah. Give us a random speed roll. Damn. Oh, hey, look at that. Damn. That's all Lieutenant Rogers needed, is he just needed. Uh... Uh, Captain Hayden to stop, you know, sporting, you know, hogging all the good rolls. Uh huh. And uh, lookout roll is going to be minus two for speed. Um, overcast, does that apply as well? Nah, not in this case. You're just looking for obstructions. Roger, Roger. And this is still deep water. And you're good, so that is going to be a total of... Yeah, you're going to max it out. 
we as hit if the gas. needed it. So that is going to be that and that and that. All right. That's weird. Ew. I did a stupid. You shouldn't do that. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. Um, yeah. What does that mean here? So that is still going to be... Okay, we'll just uh, we'll stick with that. All right, that is the rolls. That's the effects of the rolls. Um, and you guys got where to go? Okay. Uh, today. It has been cool and cloudy and raining slash drizzling all bloody day. Fine English weather. With a fresh breeze from exactly the wrong direction. Uh, and still fighting the current a little bit, although uh, uh, it has eased up. Uh, your course is west by southwest in open water up until... Uh, sun up when you can very clearly see the uh, the ridges of uh, the Kuban Mountains, and you know that you are nearing the end of your journey. And ahead, after sun up, you see the uh, lighthouse in the distance from a uh, fort. Up on a hill, you expect that is probably Havana itself. And let me make sure I'm not missing anything. I did miss something. Damn it, I should have thought about that. Too late now. Okay, well, uh, as you guys are... Uh, getting situated in the morning uh the uh it's clearly getting close to to port so you're making ready for landfall and uh mr bold reports that uh we're taking on a little more water than uh expected and uh starts poking around looking for wherever the leak is And given that you're so close to uh, landfall, he will wait until you guys stop before he starts uh, hammering on things. So it's not going to be like Probably the opening of Pirates of the Caribbean, where we arrive in port? No, not quite like that. Still the best character introduction in a long time. And with that, we are basically at the end of the journey. So um, at this point, we shortened the trip a little bit. Ship sinks and everybody dies. Which means the total uh, hours is going to be 82.6. Stupid thing, a two point six. So, you are going to pick up three long-term sanity points, and several of you are going to buffer that. That means nope, that I failed my roll. Uh, Hayden is not going to take any. 
Payne is not going to take any. Rogers is not going to take any. Since I failed, do I take more than? Uh, you do not. If you had critically failed, you would take more. Gotcha. Just against gotcha. seamanship? No, you've already made that roll. Okay. Okay, so current sanity level would, long-term sanity level would be three, right? You said three points. So, uh, let's see. Looking at the thing, you got long-term, okay. Stability points. Yeah, I got a three. Yeah, we three needed to well. actually, I need, I, I didn't break those out when I added them into a long-term and regular. So right now you've only got the sanity points there. So what I would do is add a long-term one. I don't have anything, I have long-term stability. Do you? Yeah, I have long-term stability and stability points. Well, apparently I didn't add it to Claude's. I just got stability nuts. points. Maybe I'm looking Maybe. in the wrong place. Hang on. No, no, probably no, not. No, I, I may have added it myself. You know, it's not you like may you have can added it yourself, really tell I don't know uh, why. Okay. In Claude's case, it's on the uh, the front page of the character sheet, uh, the resources yeah. tab. Yeah. I see it now. And uh, I just yeah. added the uh, LT stability on there. Okay. So, so do I need so. to bump it up to one? Make that a three. Done. All right. So, so all right. So, so uh, Rogers has stability points. He's got LTFP, LTFP for hunger and sleep. Yeah, that's, I did the same thing on yours. So you'll want to add a long-term stability line on there. Uh, but you don't need to add anything to it at this point because you succeeded. Yeah, they're accustomed to uh, long voyages. Mm -hmm. I kind of so, tired of this boat. What that means is uh, Claude is a little bit sick of this shit. So it's Spencer. So uh, stability points has, works a lot like the uh, uh, a lot of other functions in GURPS in that uh, if you take more than half, that's like a major wound. And if you get down to below a third, you start having ill effects. So right now you're, you're well above the threshold, uh, but you don't want to push it too hard. Wonder if I should get, give you an extra one for the uh, dream. Nah, we'll go easy on everybody. Still get it. still learning how to how to use that thing. I mean, haven't had anybody go crazy yet. For well, future reference, my I looked at the chronic pain. Um, it's once per day, but the GM mm -hmm. decides when I make that roll. Yeah. Right. So right. you can choose. And, uh... You can choose a time where you know a stressful situation. Maybe that's when it acts up or whatever. Yes, and I'm going to have to keep trying to remember that because I'm going to keep forgetting it's there. Or maybe I'll just roll every day, and then you can say if I fail, then you can choose when it happens. Well, keep reminding me. All right. All right. So that's the uh, stability. So you guys are some distance out still. And uh, at this point, you guys are still planning to enter Havana port directly. Yes. Yes. Question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, in the morning, uh, you see a lot of smaller ships coming out, clearly the uh, fishing fleet, and it's a big one. I think they're uh, talking. There are a lot of other smaller vessels, probably fishing boats, and the the tenders will come out and deliver provisions and that sort of thing. So a lot of back and forth. It's active. It's uh, Friday, not Saturday. So uh, end of the work week, assuming they even do that. Um, 
And way out in the distance, a few miles out, my uh, images are a few miles out. We just want to know where the treasure fleet is. Where's the treasure? I'm getting there, goddammit. Uh, you guys are actually coming from the other direction, uh, kind of that way, or from that way. So is the port over there? That is the harbor, yes. So there's a, a long stretch there uh, to get into the harbor. And uh, you guys are well aware of this coming in. And I am going to get you the thing. Wow, that's a really defensible position. It is. And it is pretty well defended. Uh, that's the first thing you see is that fortress up on the up on the hill. Um, what is uh, Haydn's Caribbean area knowledge? It's above 12, isn't it? It is. Thirteen. Okay. And Rogers Americas is uh somewhere around there as well, I think. Uh let's see here. America's thirteen. Yeah, so Rogers is less likely to have heard the specifics, but uh Hayden is is familiar with the the more or less the layout of, of the place and, and knows about the forts and all that. Uh, he probably doesn't know him by name or anything, but he was definitely expecting this one up on the hill. Uh, and uh, so early in this morning, the uh, well, it's been raining the whole time. Uh, overnight started, and it's it's just been kind of off and on uh, a little bit here and there. Uh, the winds are are coming from the west, so you're figuring it's probably going to be okay for getting into the port. Uh, and you guys are arriving or going to going to arrive around 10 a.m. ish. What I have you at 10:30. So I believe that's going to be a little after high tide. Let me check that. Ah, no, that's right around high tide. So, uh. You guys have consulted your charts and everything. You know there's going to be a fairly fairly significant uh, current uh, going into the into the harbor, and uh, given that you're arriving at high tide, then uh, it won't be so bad. So you're actually looking pretty good for actually getting into the port. Now, Hayden will also recall that uh, they have a chain across the port, so you guys are going to have to be allowed in. Uh, the actual entrance itself is about 600 feet wide. So, not too bad. Narrow on a on a geographic scale, but uh, you can get many boats through that without too much trouble. All right, so how do we go about getting permission? Well, first, uh, you guys are a few miles out from port. When I refer back to earlier rolls, which are a little farther back than I would have liked. Okay, that was that. So you guys did that. That means uh, so you are approaching port a few miles out. And whoever is on, we'll say Claude is on uh, lookout duty at that point. And Claude uh, is probably getting tired of calling out sail at this point because of all the fishing fishing boats. But uh, there is one in particular. Uh, it looks to be a schooner of some kind. And it seems kind of familiar. Claude squints. Oh, short attention. I thought that was a 
perception. Nope. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, boy. Uh, so Claude is very familiar with that boat. And uh, you are looking at the stern of that boat as it uh, heads off to the uh, west. So they're leaving port. They are leaving. Actually, it's more like oh. northwest in this case because they're having to beat against the wind. Claude will look down and see who's on deck that he can yell at. Who would be on deck? At this? Well, everybody's going to be on deck at this point. You guys are pulling in. Captain! Captain! And Claude will point off. Uh, what is it, Mr. LaCroix? Claude will point off in that direction in uh, the Dame Blanche. Heading west. Pull out the spyglass and get a good look. It is indeed. Says. Wah. Randall have a obsession? No. Uh, no. Then he doesn't feel compelled to go after it. Uh, yes, I do, but it's fame and fortune. Ah. Uh, well, that's different. That doesn't require immediate action. So, Randall, shall we continue ahead? Mm, yeah. Continue to port. We'll catch up. We'll most you surely catch up. We'll, 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 we'll surely, uh, uh, still, you know, he may have, uh, you know, the uh, a lead in the chase, but we are much smarter, more wily than he. As um, Hayden collapses his spyglass. Uh, he'll say, we'll catch her. We'll catch her easily. I have all faith in you, sir. Captain, all faith. Hmm. It occurs to me. Yes, they just left on a Friday, didn't they? Oh, that's bad luck. Oops. Uh, so you guys uh, are a couple of miles out uh, at that point, uh, getting closer. And uh, among the uh, tenders going out to the fishing boats and stuff, you start to see uh, some smaller sh smaller boats heading out uh, more in a your direction. And your first thought is probably harbor pilots looking for work. So... The question to be answered here is, will you employ a harbor pilot? Probably a good idea. Is this particular port known to be difficult? It is not. It is a really deep port, and it's got a nice long entry, but it's well guarded. But... uh no, get and you got charts of this particular one, so you know pretty much what to expect. You don't have to have a pilot. So as they approach the boat, we'll just wave them off. All right. And you continue to close the distance, and at about one mile, and you can clearly see into the harbor entrance at this point, you can see the chain uh, hung up between the two forts there at the, uh, at the mouth. And there is another boat coming, and this one looks like it is not a pilot. In fact, this has a, a more of an official, official flag on it. Who owns Havana? This is Spanish. Here comes customs. Here comes customs. And they will indeed uh, pull that boat up to yours and uh, with one of those uh, 
speaking cones yell out to uh Altalo. Um I know Spencer speaks Spanish. Does anybody else or is he gonna uh, Randall service? speaks Spanish? Does he? Yep. Yeah, because I figured Spencer's automatically going to fall into the translator uh, role. Yep, I speak it accented. I forgot Payne sp spoke Spanish. Divino speaks Italian, which, uh, given the rules that we're using, is Spanish at broken. Or yeah, he speaks Venetian. Whatever, he's like Italian. One, one level down. It's It's close enough to Italian. It's considered Italian in this case. Yeah, he so speaks he can Venetian, kind of make it not work. Italian, because you know Spencer has that as well. Uh, so yeah, they are uh, in fact speaking Spanish and ordering you to stop and uh, and allow them to board. Pass that on. We shall comply. Comply. See, see. So are we ready uh, with our uh, um uh, what is it uh, bribe or that's what's needed to get us past these dudes? And... So the way we have been doing this, and it's been a while, so I'll again right remind you is that uh, you guys had been using the plot points for handling the bribes instead of actually figuring that out, and. I never did actually. No, that's right. I put it on the party sheet, didn't I? No, I didn't. Well, I see. I have a personal prep plot point on my resources, but I think that's, yeah, that's just personal. to do with uh, just to do with medical crap. I thought you did. Put it was it logistics, I think. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you guys only ended up with like one, I think. Okay. Well, that's what I have you down for. Yeah, I think the planning didn't go as well as it had before. Okay, so you got one plot point that you can use to uh, wave off the uh, bribery in this case. Otherwise, you can uh, do that the hard way. At any rate, the uh, customs official and uh, a couple of assistants are going to uh, pull up and ask permission to board and then start rummaging about. Right, so we'll, we'll probably want to use that planning plot point so they don't rummage about. Don't want pe strange people rummaging about. Is the party officially using that plot point to prevent the rummaging about? What's the political situation between the Spanish and English? Cold War. Then we'll probably use it. We should. So be it. You have no planning pop points left, but that's okay because you're at the end of the journey. At least this part, anyway. We totally planned for it. Indeed. Yep. All right, so customs official comes aboard. You guys were expecting to have to uh, pay for uh, some... looseness and uh and your payment is accepted uh without without any fuss in fact uh kind of less fuss than you were really expecting this guy does this a lot apparently and uh once that's done uh he goes over so he's he's actually so you guys present your papers uh you have clearance papers from uh from Harbor Island, and uh, he'll note that. And you also have your cargo manifest that uh, all it has is a ton of goods on it, 
their English goods. He's like, yeah, well, there's only one ton though. And he looks over and says, ah, that's not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Screw it. So he takes the, uh, he takes the bribe and, uh, and then sails back over to the uh, fort, at which point they lower the chain. And you are waved through. And in you go. Well, here we are. You are now in Havana. Oh, na na. And uh, so as you are, if you're looking at the map here, so you guys make your way down the, uh, down the entry. And over here is uh, another one of the forts. There are six in total, I believe. And uh, this one is a bit smaller than the ones that guard the actual entrance. But uh, around this fort, you see a number of very large Spanish cargo vessels. One might also, one might refer to them as galleons, perhaps. And uh, it is very clearly the treasure fleet right there. So we we shall refer to them as loot. Yeah. And uh, those of you with the seamanship awareness, which is most of you, are going to see that they're riding real low. Uh, and as you guys are passing those and, and everybody's pointing and going, ooh, oops, like, oh, yeah, I want to talk to somebody about the, uh, I want to talk about the treasure fleet. I want to see what it's like to sail on that stuff. And Furlong stops him and says, no, you're not going to say a damn thing. You start blabbing, asking people about the treasure fleet, you're going to wind up in that fort over there in prison. And Spencer's totally not even paying attention to it. He's like staring off into the, you know, watching some gulls. And it is very busy today. You are uh, pointed to a berth where you can uh, stop and unload. They have uh, directed you to a or pointed out a warehouse where you can store your goods, uh, where they will be under custom seal until you uh, deliver them wherever you're going to go. Well, here we are. And now we, we start start making plans to go to that other place while uh, Lieutenant Rogers does some stuff in town. Oh wait, I'm no Spencer's nosy, so he's going to have been pestering Lieutenant Rogers about what he's up to when he remembers. He'd be like, so, uh, so what are you up to? And then he's completely forgotten about it uh, the next time we get around to talking. Okay, so before we are completely up against the dock, Claude is going to try to do like some kind of crazy jump from the ship over to the dock because fancy and this is taking too long. Mm -hmm. Splash, and she gets squished. Yep. Ah, uh, let's see. So, jumping. Let's deal with our shore business first. Well, so, gotta she's got to jump into the water or to the dock first, whatever. Totally to the dock. Doesn't have the jumping skill. And I think it's, it's Dex. I think. I can never uh, remember. I think you can use Dex instead of jumping skill. Dex easy, basic two of three. Awesome. Plot is very spry. And doesn't weigh much. Yeah, when you attempt a difficult jump, roll against the higher of jumping or Dex. All right, so 
here is the agenda that I am aware of. We have Rogers searching for Pickford Rodney. We have Rogers uh, attempting to deliver a message to one Juan Martinez via Lobos. We have Hayden, who may be or did not actually specify, but probably is looking for a one naval records part. office of some kind, looking for reports of Cardinal Virtue and or oh, his son. And Randall's looking for somebody in this port. Uh, Davino is going to be looking for work. No, he's not. He he's does. standing off in the, the, the distance with his arms on his uh, waist, just staring. And that's all I have on my agenda, excepting uh, if maybe, for example, Spencer might be looking for a library or something. Um, I'm looking for a library or research think, or something. Right. I, I think Spencer is probably going to be enlisted in assisting on the research uh, because I think that's what uh, Captain Hayden did the last time uh, he went uh, looking through like uh, military stuff, right? Because he knew that uh, Spencer's good at research. Plus, you know, any of the most of the uh, documents here would be written in Spanish, and well, you clearly want you know Spencer to be able to read that. Yeah, uh, um... there's that, and then then once we start looking at gathering any cargo or. Uh, whatever after the fact. No, I have no idea if Claude has anything that uh, he wants to be doing. Any any big plans? Running not, like a crazy person. Not here, but Claude will make use of what you mentioned earlier, that li listen for rumors and secrets and stuff. Maybe I, I, go do a little shopping, in quote. Actually, you know, Right, Claude should probably have some do. kind of SOP of looking for uh, looking for Philip. I'm yeah, right here. True. Oh, wait. Right. Not that Philip. Yeah, wrong one. I'm going to make a note <laughs> of that so I don't forget it. You forgot it. Huh. You have a uh, whatchamadinger on. Uh, Snap what? grid. Uh, of course he does. No, Snap to Grid is always on. It's on by No, I mean on the uh, uh, activities in town. Can't really point to what I want to do. Yeah, give me uh, that. Yeah, so uh, if he's not pressed into doing that stuff, uh, assisting, actually, yes, it does. Uh, there, uh, uh, Nosh. Um, as far as I know, because it, it's applied to any health rolls. Mm -hmm. Excellent. No, but, uh, but uh, when if if he's not uh, if if Spencer's not when he's not doing that stuff, he's probably just gonna he he needs to get probably some more uh, paper, uh, more ink, stuff like that. Maybe keep oh, an eye right. keep an eye on Dora to make sure she doesn't get carted off again. Can we send well, some of the yeah, crew that we? Uh, the crew to go secure cargo and stuff. Yeah. So we oh, try. oh, you mean actually uh, do the uh, do the trade stuff? Yeah. Uh, well, you guys can start talking about that because yeah, uh, Spencer's fine with reason. doing it. He generally well, but I mean, you have other stuff to do though. I thought. Uh, well, these things just, are not. Yeah. These things can be done simultaneously, typically. So. Uh, Obviously, Spencer can't be in two places at once, but he can participate in search efforts for in for different things while you're waiting for other stuff to happen. So that's it's not going to be a problem. So having established that, uh, I am going to bring up money. So right now you guys have a lot of British money and you're in a Spanish port. And while they will probably take British money, 
uh, they're probably going to charge you more for it. So the first thing we do once we get in there is we find a money exchanger. Banks are not hard to find. And uh, you can go there and exchange money if you want to do that. See. You will have to figure out how much money you want to change over. Uh, but uh, you guys are familiar enough with the uh, exchange rate. Uh, Spanish Spanish coin is used all over the all over the Caribbean, so you guys are very accustomed to it. <laughs> Monkey looking for trouble. Let's see here. Uh, so we've got the search for trade. And then the search, and you guys got to deal with your lodging and that sort of thing, wherever you're going to stay. Uh, the plan was for four days? Yes. Uh, approximately, with a option to fail early. If, like, oh, we got, there's a, fail early. an aha moment or the clue of all clues. Or, you know, Rogers comes running back towards the ship. It's like, we're leaving, we're leaving. Or Payne comes running back to the ship. We're leaving. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yep, I am going to get some rolls out of the way, and this is how we're going to do that. So we'll start with Rogers and the Rodney thing, and let's see. We have. In this case, minus one for the local population, plus two. Uh, Rogers does not speak Spanish. Question nine. You Question. don't have a hobnob with the, with the, you know. Okay, so is so me being nosy. That may be something that Spencer may immediately do is volunteer to, uh, to assist the uh, Lieutenant Rogers because he's he's nosy. I guess you guys have two potential translators at this point. You've got uh, Spencer and Payne who can translate. So if uh, if you guys need to coordinate so you can get around the language problem, uh, that's fine. Uh, is Rogers going to enlist aid from one of them? Oh yes. Okay. Who will he uh, Who will he contact for this? So good doctor speaks Spanish? Oh, yeah. He speaks all the languages. No, not oh, all. No. Not all. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just eleven. All right. The doctor will come with me then. Very good. Okay. Come along, Tora. Then so that's gonna be that, that, and that. And so uh the skill. You are going to use, or well, the trait you're going to roll for finding somebody in town is going to be either IQ or a particular skill if you think it applies to this particular character. And in this case, you don't really know Rodney very well at all. In fact, I don't think you've ever actually met the guy. You just know that he lost the map in a or the painting in a uh gambling thing so what's the uh what's the, the thing behind the map i'm trying to think of any skills that i may have that could assist them in finding, oh you know, uh, well you're not trying to find the help? map here you're trying to find a person no, i mean yeah i know but i i don't know what the deal is with the map at all the painting is just a painting, but it happens to also be a map. Okay, so it's a painting uh, and gambling. Does uh, does uh, Lieutenant Rogers have the gambling skill? No. Wow, that's really... Uh, I, I think that... Hmm, no, well, he was an officer. No, officers would still eh. gamble. It just wasn't as... Hey, he probably gambled. He just didn't learn gambling uh i had a deck. so given that it's gambling uh i have some other ideas as to potential uh 
skills if you want to try something. But uh, what do you have in that regard? Oh, what would not, you like not, to try? Well, I was going to, going to uh, go into a, a tavern and start to uh, drink and ask questions. Carousing. Does he have that? I have. have I have that and sex appeal. All right. Then if you want to use your carousing skill to try to track down Pickford Rodney, I will allow that one. So uh, that will be your search skill. You will be at zero penalty because you're getting help. And you can roll that in the box. Okay. And if I blow it, I'd like to use <laughs> luck, if I may. I will consider that. I think Actually, the way that... Think of I think Sorry. the way that works is you just go ahead and roll three times. And I'll pick the best one. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, I definitely will do that then. You're totally rolling 317s. You realize that, right? I mean, if it was Mel, All it would right. be 318s. So yep. noted. Now, uh, these types of searches typically take uh, one week as a base. Uh, yeah. So you can knock that down with uh, taking less time and that sort of thing. What I'm going to do here in this case is use your success or failure to determine how long it actually takes to find the guy. And right in that case... Let's see, what does that get you? I'm making a note, because I have to come back to that later. All right. Now, uh, you can do both things at the same time, potentially, or searching for your other one, the... Uh, Yes. Delivering the letter. So, uh, as a reminder, the deal was, this is the letter that you guys found on the guy that was assassinated at port -a -Pay. And Wilhelmina Deering asked you to try to deliver that letter here to its intended recipient. The name on it was... Juan Martinez Villalobos, and uh, she wanted you to try to, to deliver it in such a way as they won't realize that it has been intercepted. Now, Can I use now, my spycraft skill to figure out how I best can do that? Not only can you use that skill, but uh, I will require it. Unless uh, you can think of something else that would work better. But spycraft is what I was expecting here. So, so uh, first off, you can go ahead and make one roll for that uh, in the open to see what you can recall uh, about the situation. And you succeeded relatively well at it. So I will tell you that uh, although... Rogers may not have been here himself. Uh, he is at least networked into the British spy apparatus to enough of a degree that he knows that in a lot of these major cities, there's going to be a British spy here or even a ring of spies. And uh, the trick is to find them and they're going to know the local situation enough to be able to tell you where to find Villalobos or to to even deliver the letter for you uh, if that's better. And that said let me gather my thoughts here real quick. So 
sorry. So at this point, uh, he has to actually locate the uh, the spy ring. So this one uh, will be spycraft again. Put that one in the box, and it looks like uh, no mods. All right. So noted. Making my note. All right, those are yours out of the way, Hayden. Uh, so Hayden is going to end up doing the same thing, except uh, he's basically got to locate wherever the records would be, and that's going to be considerably easier. And he will need to bring a translator. He will probably need to bring a translator. So. If he's uh if he's doing this at the same time as Rogers, then uh he will have to get a different translator. Well, luckily Randall wanted to do research as well. True. How convenient. How convenient. That's probably not the research he was doing though. Eh. But it's a start. He doesn't have to be there the whole time. Uh, so you're going to be in a similar situation, but because you're looking for a public office, it's considerably easier. So that is going to be, so you'll use, again, it's going to be IQ or a skill. I will allow soldier or seamanship in this case. Um, and that will be at a plus three total. So you succeed by 12. And I didn't say in the box. Do you want another roll in the box? No, you're going to know that you're, you're going to find it pretty damn quick. Uh, plus 12. Let's see, where did you go? Because you guys got here early and it screwed up my schedule. Successful, boys. We messed up the GM. It's not that hard. That's another one in the win column. Well, to be fair, Daniel sort of did that to me uh, last night. Yeah, I kind of did. So it's totally, uh, totally uh, in game to uh, you know retaliate. Hey, at least I made some improvements to my note system, so I'm not getting lost every time I have to scroll around. Uh, okay, so that was Hayden's roll, and he is. He has got a translator for his thing. Um, yeah. I need to make a couple more notes here. So Rogers had Spencer. And Dora. For both searches. I hadn't decided who Dora's running with today yet. Oh, I, I thought I took her. I was pointing well, I mean, out stuff you... to her, uh, pointing out stuff to her in Dutch, since that was the language she knew. Didn't couldn't talk, but. Well, I guess if you take charge of that situation, then uh, that'll be settled. All right, and Hayden took sp pain with him. Got it. Roughly how many weeks has it been since we started this campaign? 
In game, you mean? In game, yeah. It is currently Friday the 16th of February. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven weeks. All right, next, next search thing need to get out of the way. Davino doesn't count because he's not here. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, Payne looking for libraries. So, yeah, being that you can speak Spanish on your own, uh, you probably don't need to be with uh, Hayden the entire time. You can do that search at the same time. So, uh, Randall is going to do the similar role. Uh, he's just looking for information. Um, Research. So in the box, but uh, you're going to get a considerable penalty on, or not penalty, uh, bonus on that. Uh, that wasn't research, though. Well, I guess that could work, actually, now that think about it unless it's unless you needed something else uh my research well, is i didn't think 12. about it beforehand but yeah actually research kind of makes sense let's see 46 okay la 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 Yeah, also, so at that, some that one. point in the evenings, Randall will find and hobnob with the upper crust and, uh, well, you know. Governor's daughter or wife. Okay. Or yeah. sister. So or maybe all three. What kind of information are you looking for here? Are you just looking um, for not, basically well, public knowledge? Have... Uh, not necessarily public, um, you know, maps, any kind of accounts of the area, um, any other expeditions that have, but you're not you looking know, for anything esoteric necessarily. Well, I mean, if I find things that lead me to believe there's more esoteric stuff, I'm definitely willing to write, uh, roll more hidden lore and that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, you could roll that against hidden lore if you're doing that specifically. Um, what was your skill level in that? Uh, hidden lore is 13. So why don't I just apply that roll to hidden lore instead and say you are looking for uh, esoteric knowledge? Yeah, because I want to find out everything I can about the area that I'm expecting to have to search in. Right. And if you fail on that, I'll sort of let you fail up and at least find some basic information if uh if not that. So, uh that means you rolled 94. Well, I like how he said I failed up. So <laughs> No, he said if you fail, he you would fail. Up. Oh. Oh, gotcha. All right. So, that's got your roll. And I'll sort that out. And uh, I'll go ahead and get an IQ roll in the box for Claude for uh, poking around and looking for Philip, unless uh, Claude's going to enlist help in that. Claude doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, Claude has, like, minimal Spanish, I seem to recall. Uh, according to the cheat, Claude has no Spanish. Uh, should be a perk on there, I think. Uh, minimal Spanish, unless you got rid of that. Um, ah, yep. Spanish minimal. I see it now. Thank you. Basically, she knows all the uh, bad words. Yes. All right. So, I'll note that. Yeah, what was that again? That was that. Okay, and those are those. All right, 
And to get this part out of the way, uh, merchant. So given that, uh, given that you guys are planning on staying for four days, the merchant stuff takes two days typically. So you can either do it at the same time and spread it out and get the extra extra time bonus on that, or you can do it later. Uh, probably if we could get the dudes, uh, get our team, our crewmates to be doing that. As well, that way we can focus on the other things. If, and if we can leave earlier, we we can leave earlier. Well, now, if you put them to work, they're not resting. Well, not every one of them needs to uh, rest, right? Everybody needs to rest. You guys need to rest. If you guys don't take take some time off as well, you guys are going to build up those uh, f uh, sanity we points We have nothing quick. to do on a boat most of the time. <laughs> yeah, that makes it worse. Oh, and that's why I'm going to go hobnob with the, the socialites at, you know, in the evening. Anyway. Uh, so right now, you don't know who among the crew has the merchant skill in order to be able to take over that task. Yeah, now, I'd probably Payton end doesn't up want to do it. If Payton doesn't want to do it himself, he can leave it to Spencer. That's fine. Spencer can get his own help. Um, and if you guys want to start working with the crew in order to get them to take care of that for you, then uh, we can start figuring that out. Which I'm perfectly fine with. Uh, we can also resort to uh, taking tens on those and, and just uh, hand waving a lot of the, the back and forth if uh, if you guys want to do that. But we'll we'll discuss that offline. At this point, whoever is going to make the merchant rolls yep. will deal with that. So we've got cargo, we've got speculative cargo, and we've got passengers. The uh, freight is going to be, uh, ah, crap. How much time you got, Nash? Oh, about 15 minutes. Crap. Okay, well, this part's going to have to wait. Yeah, you can uh, you can focus on him, and we can do the merchant stuff uh, we offline. We will apparently do that next time. Or well, um, we can do it offline. Depends on the uh, specifics. Let me find that point. So, uh, given that... By the end of the day, uh, yeah, by the end of the day ish, uh, Rogers is going to hear, uh, after he's been poking around, uh, through the bars and stuff, that there, there have been some people here and there who say that they have heard the name Rodney Pickford, Rodney, something like that. Yeah. And, he has been seen in the gambling houses and that sort of thing. Uh, or at least he had been until uh, maybe a month ago or so. And at least one person has said that uh, they saw him being arrested. Oh. Okay. And anybody here will tell you that if uh, somebody's been put in prison, they are going to be taken to Del Moro, which is the uh, the fort on the hill at the mouth of the at the entry of the harbor. Okay, you get information from him now. <laughs> 
So are you just going to go straight out there or uh, wait till later? Anything about uh, the, the uh, wolf character? Wolf. Oh, oh, right. You were translating. I wasn't expecting you to translate. Uh, let me see. Uh, at this point in the process, you hadn't heard back on that one yet. You, you've been in the process of going to all these taverns and you're basically asking two questions. You're asking about Piff Karate and you're asking about, uh, your spy stuff, uh, in ways that isn't obvious, hopefully. And, uh, you haven't got any hits on the, uh, on the spy stuff yet, but, uh, you did get the hits on Rodney. Did I pick up any intel on uh, Killer Kane? Uh, no. No, but that's uh, an interesting question if you want to add that to the list of things you're looking for. Yeah, just, just curious. I think at this point I would rather uh, see if I couldn't use my... Uh, <clears throat> spycraft to better understand how one could uh, get into that prison to talk to a prisoner. Well, well, you could get arrested. You could get arrested. Or you could just go bribe a guard to let you go in and there and talk to somebody. Right. I think you should go for the arrested angle. That sounds far, far, far more entertaining than hey I, I would like to bribe you to let me in or you could get Hayden to go with you and uh, he could throw his rank around and maybe that would work and then they the you know next scene has both of them uh, in a cell together going well that didn't work or you could get Claude to break him out or or here here you go you could have Sir Randall sleep his way uh, through the, uh, the the guards well, I wait. Wait. wait, wait. I, I think Roger's more likely to do that. So I'm gonna. I'm. I will fail. Uh, I will fail forward. I will make my way towards the uh, the prison, and then I'll see a body house and go. Ah, I've got a day, and I'll go into the body house. The bordello. The brothel is All right, real. so there's a, a bit of a delay in that case. Oh, so right. He'll, yeah, he'll, I'm not he'll go in the next in day. He'll go in the next day to uh, to the to the castle. No, so uh, I was thinking we could probably uh, do the, the merchanting while uh, doing the you know assisting him. You know, that could Possibly. that might be part of his, his his trade craft where he's like, yeah, I'll conceal this while assisting Dr. Spencer mm. with the, the merchanting. So do I have it correct then that, uh, so he'll go tomorrow, go in the morning. Uh, how's he going to handle that? Uh, Rogers will definitely uh, wait until about uh, mid morning and then head out. Or maybe okay. early morning. Okay. Depends on when he gets kicked out of the brothel. Is he going to get help? Oh, no. No. No, no, no. This is something Rogers can handle. Rogers can handle almost anything. Oh, you're overconfident, too? That's awesome. All right. Well, it's not that unusual for, you know other Europeans to be able to speak English, so you can probably make your way around. All right, so uh, you're going to go to the castle and uh, ask to see a prisoner? Question mark? Uh, yes. All right. You are seeking to gain admittance. So, uh, there are 
you can use a base reaction rule, or you can attempt to influence them to allow you in. Sure, I am going to uh, use my, b -b 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 let's see, fast talk. That could potentially work, although if they realize that they had been swindled, they, they may not let you back out again. True. Then excitement ensues. Well, let's and see. We actually we kick off the, uh, the, the impending war. It may not be that bad. I mean, you're just visiting. Maybe they just kick you out. <clears throat> I will. Uh, the same cell. Cell. Maybe I'll fast talk and drop a bit of coin in 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 the, to seal the deal. Well, bribery is going to be a little different, but uh, let's. Oh, see. I'm sure let's they're not paid here. well. Nobody in this area is paid well except filthy nobles. All right, so you're going to blather your way past uh, to be allowed in. What kind of angle are you talking there? Uh, I need to, uh, let's see, what angle could I use? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe he owes you money. He owes you money. No, if no, you're spending if you're money. Spending money. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say something to the effect that uh, I don't have much time. I need to press this guy for information. Uh, he knows something about my... Uh, he knows something about my uh, missing sister's whereabouts. And uh, I'm sure if you're... I'm sure if you're... Uh, if you have sisters, you'll understand how pressing it is when you're concerned for your younger sister's well-being. Something like that. He's he's struggling to understand what you're saying. Uh, he doesn't speak English very well. Uh, this particular, uh, I guess he would be a clerk of some kind. Not a clerk. I guess he's just a guard. He's just a guard duty guy. But uh, you you say the name Pickford Rodney, and he's going down the list, and uh, he says, uh, "Ah, sorry, I think you're a bit late." And he points over there into the into the courtyard. And says. That's that's Pickford Rodney right there, and you see uh, a man on the gallows drop. Dun dun dun! Uh, Cut like, to black. Like just black. the music. He's the music. roll credits. He's roll he, credits. He's he's just. You you say he's hanging there, or he just dropped? He just dropped. All right. Then he needs to jump back to to Rogers, where he goes. Well, shh, and it. Then it cuts to black. Oh well, I would have I would have dragged that out a little longer, but, uh, you, but had uh, you had to go. Right. Well, I I will just simply look at the guard and say, ah, couldn't have happened to a better man. And walk away. What actually happens next time? All right. So uh, would his job happen to be open? Let's see. Last ending stuff. What do we got here? All right. Uh, everybody's going to get one XP. For uh, uh, the week. Uh, uh. Uh, stability. I am not going to deal with this yet. So, really, mostly we're only going to be concerned with uh, the long-term fatigue or the long-term stability points, uh, because the short-term stuff are the ones that only take ten minutes to get rid of. So, unless you're in a nasty situation, uh, you're probably not going to have any effect from that. Clearly, Spencer's going to have to take at least one day off to mm -hmm. go do nothing all day. Some of you are going to have to uh, take measures. Uh, let's see, Benny's. Uh, 
nominations for someone who gets a Benny for today. Huh. I would say Hayden for, you know, really desiring to make it more interesting, but just rolling too darn well and, and winning the day. Is that really suffering? Succeeding too much? I think in that situation, yes, it was. He was agonizing over there. It's not fair. I wanted to fail this role. I didn't want to be this awesome. I'm too good. And everybody's like, shut up, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to nominate Dora for being the quietest person present. I mean, she even outquieted uh, uh, Ethan's character. <laughs> I'll second for uh, Hayden. Seconded. Motion carries. All right. Extra Benny for uh, for Hayden. Hayden has lots of bennies. Yeah, you guys haven't spent any a bit. I need to start doing stupid stuff to get bennies. I've only got one. I keep forgetting that they're there. Yeah, I know. It's hard. It's like you, you need to stick them somewhere where they're in your face all the time so you can uh, don't forget they're there. But uh, it doesn't matter where you put them. You'll still forget about it. Well, put them in your um, resource tab on your character sheet. They are. And just have that part open all the time. All right. All well. Right. Uh, that's basically it. So, if you're watching this and you have questions, corrections, suggestions, or general hecklings, feel free to leave a comment here or find us on Discord. Like and subscribe and all that. Thank you for watching. Olympus out. Goodbye, stream. See ya. See ya. Good night, stream.